Uh, welcome, welcome to SkyTour live stream for this February 15th, 2023. I'm Mark D'Antonio, and as always, we have our good friend Daryl Mason with us. Hello, Daryl. How are you? Hello, Mark. Uh, I'm getting by. Thank you. That's Hello, good. everybody. That's good. Uh, and We're having a blizzard here. Yeah, you're having a real blizzard there, that's for sure. I, I heard about that earlier. And uh, I want to also uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome, actually, another person to the stream. We actually have Marianne Rob with us. Hello, Marianne. How are you? I am wonderful, Mark and Daryl and everybody on chat. It's so cool to be here. Thank you. Oh, this is great. I figured that as as one of the uh, heavy hitters in SkyTour live stream, that you deserve to you know be showcased once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. No, of course, and. and uh, I thought it might be nice to have you come in for a little while. I don't know how much time you have, but, you know, when you have to go, you can just let us know. But uh, we're just crazy, you know. When we tend to go and, and uh, you know, uh, we go for many hours more than I, I even think we're doing. So it's kind of crazy, you know. Uh, but I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll be, yeah, you, you, I'll be you, fast asleep in about an hour. There you go. So there's there's your time limit. I see it. All right. You know, sunset later now and... Uh... Oh, yeah. Start adjusting the uh, start times for you know it. I know it. I know it. I want to welcome Donald Kunzer. He was the first one here. Hi, Donald. Great to see you. PG and Renee Cruz. Uh, and Robin Curtis. Hello, Robin. And CND Boy from Canada. How you doing, man? And Jose Santos. Good evening to you as well, Jose. And Cyclone is with us. Uh, nice start to the evening. Rocket City Astro. That's Michael Clegas. Hi, Michael. How are you? Are you using your telescope tonight? Uh, Robo, uh, Robert uh, Fratia, good evening, and, and welcome to you, too. Everything is uh, going well in Southern California, I hope. Uh, and uh, I think we should we should actually have a fun night tonight, you know. And uh, I want to also uh, say that, you know, earlier tonight we had a, a amazing uh, uh, Starlink stream go over our, right here, right over me. And I did a videotape of it, which I will show you. Uh, hello, Cindy Murphy. Nice to see you. Uh, and um, so tonight we're going to actually do a mosaic of a few things. And uh, I will show you that in a little bit. Bonnie on Ahada 77. Hello. How are you? Uh, so we've got, you know, the gang's all here. You know what I mean? And it's really good. And Judy M is with us. Hello, Judy. Daisy and Zoe Amethyst are with us as well. Uh, it's just a going to be another uh, wonderful night and uh, Michael Hedrick is with us as well and Barbarina Zwicky how are you Barbarina welcome uh, Barbarina is uh, 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 a wonderful uh, person who joined us in uh, in recent uh, week or so uh, and uh, her father of course was the famous astrophysicist and astronomer Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky uh, for whom the comet is named we, we will have to take a look at the comet tonight as well because we always like to look at that comet. It's almost directly overhead. So it's uh, great to see you again, Barbarina. Uh, and this guy, Daryl, is in our chat. Who's he? <laughs> uh, that's okay. You'll miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> I don't know. Will I be aiming? <laughs> uh, depends. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, welcome, and it's so good to see you. Uh, this is just a blank star field right now. I just used it to do our critical focusing, which I did. Uh, and what I'd like to do now, actually, is it'd be kind of nice to uh, head out and see, uh, check in on our comet. I mean, we always check in on the comet, so we'll do that first. Uh, and I'll get our coordinates for the comet here real quick and plug them in. All right, and let's do this. So we're going to go over here and plug this, plug these in. That's that first set. I'll plug in the second set. And I've noticed the coordinates are drastically changing. Uh, but that's good. So now we'll say go to, and you'll watch the telescope change. Okay, as it heads up to find the comet, off it goes. Hey, Mark, while you're doing that, it looks like we have a Julie Guzman. Uh, she says new here, so hey, I want to welcome see her. her. That's so cool. Thank you, Marianne. Hi, Julie Guzman. How are you? Where are you from, Julie? 
We always like to find out where people are from. You'd be surprised. They're from all over the world already, the people that are in here. Oh, there's our beautiful comet. Um, so let us know that, Julie. Isabella. And Isabella yep. is here. What? Oh, she's she's from <laughs> West Point, as in West Point, New York. Wow. Oh, fantastic. That is cool. Yeah, uh, Barbarina, I noticed uh, it was your dad's birthday, and I wanted to uh, to uh, wish him a happy birthday through you. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk on the 14th, though. But uh, wonderful. I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, I mean, he was a, a most amazing human being. Without him, uh, modern astronomy would not be what it is now, uh, as, as we all know. You know. That's so cool. Happy birthday. That's neat. And Isidro Perez, how are you? First time for you. Hey, welcome. And make sure you subscribe. You know, and check us out because we look at things live in the night sky, you know, and, and we take pictures that you cannot believe, as you'll see, because tonight we're going to do some. All right. So this is right now, this is Comet C, C slash 2022 uh, E3. That's the name of this. Uh, and then ZTF for the Zwicky Transient Facility. Uh, and that's what we're looking at right now. This is a uh, comet. And interestingly enough, uh, I mentioned this before, and I'm sorry to if it embarrasses you, uh, Barbarina, but uh, you'll see Barbarina's wiki is in the chat. She is the daughter of the man for whom this transient facility at Mount Palomar is named. The, the, the object that found this comet was on a telescope. It's a a series of uh, massive, massive megapixel cameras. I think it's, was it uh, 500 plus megapixel camera? I think it was, uh, that's on there. It's on the Ocean Telescope. And uh, it's <clears throat> it's the uh, robotic telescope system that is looking for these transient objects. And uh, the daughter of the man for whom it's named is here in the chat. That's Barbarina's wiki. So show her some love, say hello to Barbarina. Because she has a father that made all this possible in a lot of ways. Um, so we'll take a, a quick exposure here just to see what we got. Uh, we are guiding right now. Um, I don't have my the computer up, but just for the people that are the first time here, I just want to uh, go through real quick and show you the different uh, locations on the screen. All right, this here, this is the telescope control section. This is the telescope computer. This is the telescope itself out in the building 2,500 miles from me. Uh, this is you know, the big mouth who's doing all the talking. Sorry about that. This is our main view, and then this over here is the telescope uh, camera su uh, system, and this is our focusing system here. We do auto focusing. We have thermal controls. The camera telescope is set to uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius, the uh, sensor, and it gets rid of all of the uh, noise, most of the noise, on it. So that really helps us. Um, so I just want to. Uh, start an exposure here while we're at it this over here the most important things as I often point out uh, the most important elements of our screen to be care to pay attention to is this right here this is the exposure and this is the gain so these two are the ones that I'll change uh, more often than not all right and and that uh, the time uh, is the time of course that we're exposing for and in this case we'll do uh, 30 seconds all right and uh, the gain is the sensitivity on the sensor it's set for 300 that's good all right so now what we'll do is we'll actually take this image and so when we say we're gonna take the image it starts taking the image you can see down here in the lower right corner way over there you can see a little yellow progress bar when that fills up it means that we're at the spot where it's done and then you'll see the image on the screen meanwhile I'm gonna start a stack this is a live stack all right this is uh, an image uh, that will be read off of our sensor uh, and you'll see it momentarily in two seconds as a matter of fact you'll see the comment here in just a second okay so there we go now you say well where is it well what we what I did share with you is that this is actually an unprocessed shot and now it's processed and there's the comet and let's color correct it and there we go and so here you can actually see the comet this is a uh, 
a real-time view. It's actually, a, I should say, a 30-second delayed view. It's a 30-second exposure. So we can adjust this and, and look for different aspects uh, and do things like this. Right now, if you look at, you'll see there's this bright line right here. This uh, looks like the tail to me, the the ion tail or the plasma tail of the comet. Uh, there's more stuff down here too, which is really interesting. Little wings of it down here. This has definitely changed over the last few days, and this is the dust tail. Now, so you see the dust tail. This is the nucleus of the comet. And it's green because we're looking at diatomic carbon. That's two carbon atoms connecting together. Carbon has four electrons with which it can bond with anything else. And sometimes three of those electrons will bind with each other and, and form a bond. And so the two carbon atoms will be uh, held together by those bonds and it makes a molecule of carbon, two carbon atoms. Also, when that gets ionized, when ultraviolet radiation from the sun strikes the comet uh, chemistry, Okay, those carbon atoms will ionize and they'll lose electrons. And those electrons go off the, the, uh, the, the uh, atoms and then come back in. And when they come back in, they give off light. The light they give off is green. And that's why the comet is green. That's why it's called the green comet. Now, it's not just carbon atoms, all right? But there's another uh, uh, chemical compound that's generated here. And I know Daryl knows what that chemical compound is. So why don't you tell everybody, Daryl? Cleanser. Now the, uh, the <laughs> yeah, right. It's Comet Cleanser. Uh, no. That's green. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's uh, diatomic uh, carbon. Yeah, that was what we just mentioned, the diatomic carbon. But the other one that uh, Flammarion was playing with and, and, and you know, caused quite a ruckus with. Remember that one? Oh, cyanogen. Cyanogen, right. That's a carbon and a that's nitrogen atom. Cyanide. Yeah. And that's not too healthy for us. But when that's when that is ionized as well, when the electrons are sent off, when they come back, they give up energy, and that energy is in the form of light, just like with the carbon atoms, and you get a green glow as well. So uh, the the commonality between that is the carbon atom. So it's the carbon atom that's being, when it's being ionized. When those electrons return, they glow green, and that's something that we see in all comets. It's not just this comet. Almost every comet I've ever seen, I think every comet I've ever seen, uh, has a green head like this. This is the coma of the comet. Um, and we can zoom in now. We've got seven exposures we've stacked here, so we can actually come in a little closer now. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that ion tail. Look at that plasma tail. Do you see that, guys? That's pretty clear, Daryl. See it? Uh, I was doing something. Give me just a second. Yeah, right there. You see that, Marianne? I I do. I got two questions for you. Yeah. That's pretty cool. One, whereabouts is the comet right now? So if anybody wants to look up in a dark sky with binoculars, um, can they see it? Whereabouts in the sky is it right now? It okay. is uh, south of Mars. It's uh, in Taurus. It's actually, uh, it's actually entering the Hyades star cluster at night, which is uh, the V-shape that makes the head of the bull. I was just looking, Mark, over uh, uh, Marianne at the Sky Live on uh, the Comets Info page, not the star chart. Okay. The Info page. If you scroll down, scroll down, there is a really good uh, diagram showing uh, the comet's position in space in the solar system, and it's actually it's right between uh, Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit. And it's heading south out of the plane of the solar system. It's a really cool diagram. It's called Visualization of Comet C 2022 E3 ZTF Orbit. I yeah. will post a, a link in, in chat. And if you want to follow that, if you scroll down, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, if you look at the screen okay. that I'm sharing, you'll, it, it's there. Oh, nice. okay. There yeah, it no is problem. right there. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. Very good. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Can people still see it with binoculars right now, would you say? Uh, well, it's magnitude 6.7, so the answer is yes from a from a, a, a fairly dark sky. Uh, okay. But you have to you do have to use binoculars. And to them, they're not going to see they're not going to see this, okay? They're not going to see what we see here. Right. Okay. They're going to see a, a faint fuzzy, which I think I can actually approximate what people are going to see. Let me just give you a shot here to 
a shot to try this. Okay, so we're gonna... Let me, uh... Approximate what we'll see. Okay, while you're doing that too, just a quick question is... Some like this. How, how long do you think it will be that we can actually see it? When is it going to be out of our, I guess, view? Uh, that's... I'm, I'm not sure, okay, actually, yeah. but okay. uh, we can look that up. Uh, the thing is that it, as it's heading out of the solar system, it's going to be kind of uh, moving. as It's going to keep going on the same trajectory it's going on now, so it's, it's heading uh, uh, more toward the south a little bit. Uh, yeah. it, it's going to pass west of Orion uh, from our point of view and head off into the southern sky. Uh, it is moving away from us now. It's getting farther away and it's getting smaller in the apparent size in the sky from our point of view. Uh, the question might be, how long will the comet remain interesting to look at? Yeah, that's more like uh, it. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it's gonna be, keep getting smaller and dimmer night by night as it moves away from us. Uh, it'll still look cool, hopefully for Oh, a few weeks, but it is going to kind of move off into the distance and uh, uh, it's going to cool off too and start emitting less uh, gas and dust eventually and there won't be much to look at. Yeah, once the once the ultraviolet energy of the sun wanes enough and, and uh, lessens, then you're not going to get this activity on the, on the surface of the comet, which causes all this. So little yeah. by little, they become inert again for the next tens of thousands of years if it's periodic uh, before it comes back again. You know, that, for... uh, that diagram you put up, Mark, uh, uh, and folks, I put the link up in chat. If you scroll down until you see that, it's like a diagram of the solar system. You can see Earth's orbit and Mars's orbit and the comet is heading south right between them. Uh, you can drag that around with your mouse and get a really good idea of what the comet is doing. The comet came from the north from the top of the screen there, and it passed uh, closest to the sun back on January the 12th. Then it passed closest to Earth on uh, February 1st. And now it's uh, two weeks later, and it is uh, headed south out of the solar system. It is already you see right there. It's already below the plane of the uh, the plane of the solar system, the ecliptic plane. Right. So it's going to keep going this way, uh, which yep, if we move, move out, you'll see that that's going this way. So eventually, it's going to continue on the path it's going until it's no longer visible in our sky, um, but might be visible in the southern sky for a period of time. But then it's going to also get too dim for most backyard telescopes and it'll end up becoming as dim as some of the other comets that are out there right now yep. but yeah, this is this it. is what comets do uh, yeah Halley's Comet did this back in 1986 uh, it uh, passed close to Earth and then it uh, slowly flew away from us back out into space and uh, kind of lost sight of it after a while yep so there's ETF you can see it's below the plane of our solar system right there and there's the earth and it's kind of interesting to to look at this and say well hey there it is that's the comet that we're looking at right there so that's pretty cool thank you for showing that no no it's very it's a very good visualization now mark a quick question <laughs> yeah. um this comet goes away uh, can they predict when the next comet is coming in that we can see or does it it's just like this one hey it we have a comet in our area so we're going to start watching it and following it well the this wiki transient facility is a this telescope with this massively uh, humongous megapixel camera and it's doing robotic searches of the sky for just such things it's, it's not uh, it's not necessarily uh uh, predictable when we're going to see more comets because keep in mind uh, in our solar system if we go back to that uh, screen again for just a minute um, let me uh, pull it up again because uh, in our solar system we have a, a very interesting uh, 
well, I'll show you. Why not just show you? If we zoom out, okay, all right, you can see, okay, the, see where the comet's going? That's the orbit, that, that's sort of the orbit we know, right? They could predict that. But how much further out does it have to go? It goes out quite a lot, all right? Now, there's Pluto out here. But you know what? We're still not to the out, outer limits of our solar system, okay? Pluto's on a 17-degree inclination to our solar system, so if we go level, Pluto is on that kind of an inclination. However, uh, way out past Pluto and all the way out into this range out here, we have the Kuiper Belt. This is That's K-U-I-P-E-R. The Kuiper Belt is the realm of icy bodies. Now, when the New Horizons spacecraft passed Pluto a couple years ago, it went on to meet Ultima Thule, which was one of the Kuiper Belt objects. And that that's what they call a contact binary. It's two objects that are cemented together by a, an original, they were probably closely orbiting objects that ended up cementing together because they collided and that instantaneous heating at the moment of collision welded them together when that ice melted. And now they're just spinning, they're like two spinning pancakes is what they really look like. And that's actually, uh, that's the whole uh, Ultima Thule thing, right? That's what, that's what Ultima Thule is. So that said, um, that's the Kuiper Belt, it's out here. Now beyond the Kuiper Belt, we have what's another belt called the Oort Belt, that's O-O-R-T. And the Oort Belt is also joined by a gigantic sphere of objects around the whole solar system, way, way, way out, way out here, okay? And this distance way out here, all right, this is not even close to it, all right? It's, a, it's even further than this, and that's called the Oort Cloud. And the Oort Cloud is actually thought to extend more than half the distance to Alpha Centauri. So that's interesting. It, it, it would go out a, more, than, more than a light year anyway. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Yep, and that's where Comet ZTF came from, is the Oort Cloud, and that's where it's headed back to now. That's right. So it'll be interesting to see what its actual uh, period is and, and how long, uh, if it's periodic at all. Um, I'm looking forward to finding out, but I don't know that we'll get the data in our lifetimes, but we'll see. Yeah. But there it is. That purple line represents the, the orbit we know of, of, uh, of this object captured by this wiki transient facility. And we have to they zoom were... in. They were throwing around the number 50,000 years, but I don't think they really know yet or when they will know. Uh, it may never come back. That's true. Um, and we, we don't know the the orbit yet. I mean, again, um, but who cares? Look how beautiful this is. Look at that gorgeous plasma tail. Still pretty. Really shows up nicely. Let's see what else is out here. This I'm going to push it all just a little bit. See a little bit more. So you can see if we go really overdo it, you can see that uh, there's a tail right here. It goes all the way through our whole image and out beyond. So there's a lot of data here. This is our dust tail out here. And this is more dust over here. There's a whole nother, uh, there's some more spikes of dust tail that are here. A fan, it's like a large fan. Um, and, and that's sort of over-processed. If we bring it back down to normal, it looks like this. And this is a little bit more like uh, we're used to seeing. All right, so I'm going to clear this and let one more shot come in, then I'll take another shot. Hello there, Elisha Venus. How are you? Nice to see you. Julie Guzman says, I wrote a poem about the Green Comet. Oh, the Green Comet. Green Comet, all fuzzy, green and bright. Lovely in the heavens, like a solar zooming light. An astronomical delight, even to this West Pointer's eyes. Well, that's very nice. Oh, that's cool. That's beautiful. That's very, very Thank nice. You. Thank you for sharing that, Julie. I like it. Yeah, comets, uh, you know, comets have sparked uh, romantic ideas. They've sparked uh, fantastical ideas. They've sparked uh, a lot of uh, doom and gloom as well. They're, they're harbingers of death, harbingers of, of destruction. 
uh, in past cultures. And in others, they've been harbingers of, uh, you know, uh, good things to come. So I guess it's all in your perspective now, isn't it? Let's uh, color correct this. There we go. How nice. How very nice. And it's just pretty, pretty. Uh, Alice, it's debatable whether the comet will leave the solar system. Uh, it will travel way, way far out. As we were just talking a couple of minutes ago, uh, uh, if it is still in orbit about the sun, uh, it may take 50,000 years uh, before it comes back again. And so that's traveling way, way far out in the Oort cloud. Yeah. Hello, Tim F. Good to see you. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. This, uh, sometimes, you know, just staring at the comet, it's like, all you gotta do, you just gotta look. You know, I could put away all my physics and all my astronomy and just enjoy the beauty of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. And, and think of the sheer violence going on on this right now. There are ultraviolet energies that are literally ripping electrons off of atoms surrounding this comet, causing the green light from the glowing carbon atoms. And the electrons streaming back behind the comet, those that get lost, are uh, the ion tail. Uh, these are uh, basically uh, a stream of these high energy particles streaming back. Uh, just fantastical to think about that. You know, the comet is literally under siege right now. It's under siege. Um, when it went around the sun, it was at maximum siege level, and now it's actually um, uh, uh, on the waning side of the siege. And it looks like it survived. Some comets don't. Sometimes comets will break up into multiple nuclei after rounding the sun, and sometimes as they go around the sun, they never come out. They are destroyed. Uh, you know, objects that have been around since the beginning of the solar system come in, they go around the sun, and they end their existence in one final show. And that's it. And that's what happens sometimes to comets. Hello, Richard Spencer. 50,000 years, he asked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, that that's the... Uh, that's the period they, they initially thought that the comet might uh, take if it's periodic. You know. And they might as well just say we don't really know yeah. for a really long time. Yep. Exactly. So, um, we'll save this. Right, and, and when we save, what are we doing? We're saving to our server. <clears throat> and our server is online for you all to get to. And the way you get there is by going to skytourlive.org. In the upper left corner, you can go to the live stream, which is this. In the upper right, you can see our Patreon. If you want to support us monthly for what we do, and this costs us lots of money, but still, um, it's hard not to do it, right? I mean, look at look at what we look at what we can see. Look at what we can do. It's fantastic. Um, and if you scroll down on skytourlive.org, go down to one section, next section below, and you'll see "Take Me to the Really Cool Pictures." And the pictures that we're taking right now will be appearing up there momentarily. It's uh, it's pretty cool, and uh, I would I would think that you might you might actually uh. You might actually enjoy these so give it a shot and check that out um and i will uh also uh show it to you all right i'll just give you an idea while we're waiting here for this to come in uh let me share that with you okay so this is let me take the name off we don't need the name here this is right. pull that out there okay uh oh no thanks i don't have a question to myself so up in the upper left, you see Sky Tour live stream. It takes you to our stream, and then our STLS Patreon page. Contact us, and 
You can also go to Sky Tour Radio, which is our Sunday night radio show from 6 to 8 p.m. Myself and Daryl Mason and Tara Dayulis are the hosts of that show. Um, and if you scroll down to the next section to I Want Cool Pictures, this is what you do. This tells you what to do. But let's just say, let's go to the online database. Now, I'll just show you. It's a bright screen, but don't worry, okay? Because now you see all these folders and you go, well, what the heck do I do? You'll notice that 215, well, that's tonight. So if you click that folder, what do we got in there? Uh-oh, Comet C2022 E3 CTF. And already we have imagery in here that we just took. These images were just put up on our server moments ago from the telescope moments ago. So here you go. This is what you get for free. You can come up here and take these down for free. All you have to do is go to skytourlive.org. That's an example of, of what we do. And if you want the pictures, you go there. If you want to take try your hand at doing your own image processing, you can download these astronomical uh, file format called FITS and use these within Photoshop or other tools if you wish to do that. And if you want to see what else we've done, well, you could just come back and you'll, you'll get here and say, well, wait, you shot something on the 9th? What was on the 9th? And you go back and look and say, oh, look, we shot M106. That's a galaxy. And if you go in there and just keep going down in, and you go to processed images, and you click on there, and boom, you see this beautiful galaxy that we shot, right? And it's a beautiful set of galaxies. There's more than one. You've got this one, you've got that one, that one, that one, and, and they're all throughout here. And these images are all free for you to take from our server. Now, the ultra highly processed ones, the ones that we actually make very, very professional quality, those um, you can get at, uh, we give you uh, for the Patreon, for the Patreon $10 a month, uh, you get four a month that you can see. And they're highly processed. You can do with them what you will. And um, at the higher tiers, you get access to all of our images, all the highly processed images. And we have tens and tens of them. So you can hang out with those as well so that is the skytourlive.com there's a lot more in skytourlive.org you can see all that stuff up there and uh i would encourage you i would encourage you to, to to check it out because it's really really fascinating to go there and and watch look at our galleries and see all these things again skytourlive.org join the patreon if you want and get all this stuff uh and see it and learn all about it even more than than uh, we do here on the stream live. Hey, Mark, I just want to also thank Isabella uh, for doing this for us. I mean, I've, I've thanked her typing to her in chat, but it's nice to be able to verbally tell her thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you have done and have uh, gotten all these pictures together and put them in folders and and it's been wonderful it's wonderful Thank well you. the the folder setup is something that the observatory we're doing by herself what isabella does is she actually uh she manages our tables of contents for every stream cool okay so uh, the folder that's an automatic process the observatory is doing that by itself and shipping these out and the reason is because we don't want to have anything lost so as soon as the picture is taken it goes up to the cloud and goes down to our our uh, our uh, server that's uh, active and available to everybody. You know, hello Lucy Clark, Diane Harris is here. You know who Diane Harris is. I know is, who right? Diane Harris is. Where's yeah. Randy Harris? I think he's hiding in the uh, shadows. He uh, just told me that he shoveled out or actually snow plowed five different driveways. They've had a lot of snow up in Pine Top today. Oh wow, that's in Arizona, guys. Yep. Of all things, Arizona. Yep, we yeah. have snow. Yep. <laughs> all right, thank you all are getting the, the backside of the storm that's hitting here now. Wow. Well, actually, we're getting the backside of it too, but uh, you're on the backside of the low pressure cell coming back around at you. Well, wow. I'll let them have it up north. I'll be happy with my sunshine down here in the valley. Yeah. Uh, we need the moisture as usual. Amen. Amen to that. Okay, we're going to we're going to leave the comment behind for a little while tonight and we'll be back to it. Uh, before you go. Oh, yes. Well, let's take a good look at the comet and talk about it. The I think it looks like uh, 
Did you wipe it? I did, but uh, I can bring it back. Okay, if you wouldn't mind. In fact, I'll make it a 35 second exposure. Just for you. <laughs> okay. So that's the I live view. Okay. Go ahead. The comet's appearance is changing. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it is not only smaller because it's farther away now, but I think the dust tail continues to narrow. And there's kind of a split between it and the gas tail now. Interesting. Because I actually thought it was... Uh, let me get rid of this here. And clear this here. Okay. Um, I felt that the dust tail... Uh, isn't necessarily narrowing, but it looks like it's actually crossing over to the bottom side of the comet as well. I'll show you on this image. I, I, I don't know what's actually going on physically with the comet, but I think I see uh, additional spikes of this dust tail, uh, which will show up here in two seconds. Ready? One second, and boom. There we go. So that reminds me, uh, yeah. did you see that video I posted last night? Oh yeah. Beautiful video. Yeah. It was of the comet over time. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to post that for people in chat. Okay. Uh, it was a really cool video it was on space weather last night. Uh, it's a Vimeo video, not a YouTube video. Uh, a guy in Portugal imaged the comet over the course of a month and uh, caught all the really fascinating changes the comet went through over time. No, if you see that now, you can see the gas tail yep. sticking off to the upper left at about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. And to me, the dust tail, you see there's a dark wedge there above the gas tail right there, and then you see the dust tail above that. Yep. I think it looks like the dust tail is getting narrower over time, at least from our point of view, because... This is a 3D object, and the, uh, both tails are starting to point away from us. Uh, when they when they had the other processing going, I could actually see more stuff down here, though. So I was wondering whether something was crossing over that. Um, and it's not, you know, the, the gas tail is pointing in an entirely different place than the dust tail. You know, so you see the dust tail out here. The dust tail is all the way out here, but you can kind of see it. Um, and right now, I, I see what looks like a void in here, but that's actually uh, an a artifact of this coma being so bright. Um, but it's interesting, too, I got to say. So there's a lot going on here, no doubt. Yeah, hey, you might be right, Daryl. You might be right. Let me zoom in some more here. Wow. That really is pretty. Now see right here? I see I see potentially I see potential dust tail right in here. Do you see this stuff? Mm -hmm. That looks like a, a fan of dust tail here. All the way down to, to the plasma tail. And I thought I saw it down below, but I could be seeing things up with you uh okay say again what you're saying okay i said i see a fan of the dust tail yes right here all the way down to the plasma tail and earlier i thought i could see a little piece of the dust tail you know you know as seen through the gas tail down below but i, I could be wrong i try not to I see things know. i uh i think i see a kind of a dark space to above the gas tail before you start seeing the dust tail. Yeah, see there's... The, dust, the, the fan of the dust tail just looks narrower to me than it did. Okay, but I see this is the dust tail, but I also see some over here with a little bit of a void in, in between it right there. Yeah. And I just over-process for that. So let me just bring that back down. That's cool. 
All right, so we can okay. move on for a few minutes then, I think. Thank you for indulging me. No, not at all. That's great. And as always, we will save all these little images here. And we're saving them exactly the same as you saw when we when I took you out there uh, to the database. You can see that this is all active data that we're capturing. All right, so we're going to get rid of the stack for one thing, and then we're going to go back to our uh, night vision mode, as I call it, which is here. There's night vision mode. This is uh, at one second intervals, right? Again, the exposure I told you to pay attention to, it's at a thousand milliseconds. That's one second. It's a thousand milliseconds in a second. All right. And so now we'll bring up our um, planetarium system that allows us to uh, find things. I'm going to bring up our computer as well. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and see if we can see this object that we saw before, which is really cool. I didn't want to do that. I want to leave it here. Okay. So back over in here. All right. All right. And now we're going to find... A measure object known as Measure 78. All right. Now let me explain what we're going to do. Here's the Orion constellation right here. Okay. The Orion constellation has a ton of really wonderful objects in it. Now the Orion Nebula is down here. The horse head is here. If you want to see those, we'll look at them. But we're going to do a couple other things. We're going to do this. We're going to look at the cast with a friendly ghost nebula and then we're going to actually do a mosaic of this region from the cast with a friendly ghost over to this other object over here with not that that's a star um, and to see that I have to actually uh, bring in uh, Lynn's Lynn's uh, dark nebulae I'll do the bright nebulae too because it's in there. And the Barnard. <clears throat> Those of you who know me know that I think that the dark nebulae in our universe, the dark dust clouds, these are the things that are the most important clouds in our galaxy. So we're, this is uh, Lynn's Dark Nebula 1622. This is what's otherwise known as the Boogeyman Nebula. Really fascinating location. And we'll check it out. But we also have... Uh, the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula, which is right here. All right. And now, if we want to do a mosaic, you'll say, well, is that a huge distance? Let me show you our field. Okay. You can see a red square show up. That red square is the size of the field of the telescope. Okay. There it is. So if we have Casper the Friendly Ghost here and we zoom out a little bit, you can see that Lynn Stark Nebula 1622 is actually just up here. So we'll be able to capture that quite nicely. And you'll see that red band toward that's the right. upper left right now. That's Barnard's loop. Uh, it sort of separates uh, the Boogeyman <clears throat> and Casper. Yep. And uh, we'll, should make a nice uh, sort of natural divider the two. Yeah, and this Barnard's is Barnard's loop is a large supernova rim. Yeah, it looks like a big red semicircle up uh, on the. Uh, See it right there. On the uh, constellation of Orion. Yeah. And again, this is Alnataka, Alnalam, and Mintaka, the three belt stars of Orion over here. So this stuff is all in that region. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to go to the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula, also known as Measure Seventy Eight. All right. And we'll check that out. So let's go. You'll watch our telescope head on down there now, and you'll see the screen change as we streak our stars away. All right. You know, Mark, Santos. it's so crazy. Huh? Go watch, ahead. It, it's just so crazy watching the telescope do its thing when we were, Tara and I were just out there, what, two weeks ago? And we took the camera apart and we cleaned did. the lens and cleaned everything. It's 
it's so cool. It's like your baby watching your baby do what needs to be done. Um, you know, on the screen here, it is so cool that we were just out there playing with it and taking care of it just two weeks ago. I know, right? Oh, it's so cool. And look what you've done. You did a great job. So I want to, Jose Santos has a, has something to say. He says, Mark, I think the green line or blue line you call plasma uh, is the opposite direction where the comet is going. What you said about that. Um, not sure what you mean but I, I can say this okay that plasma tail always points away from the Sun that's because the Sun is causing it so no matter which way the comet is going that plasma tail is pointing away from the Sun so if it's going directly away from the Sun it'll be going into its plasma tail okay we're going right be going right into that plasma tail if it's heading away from the Sun because the Sun's down here shooting ultraviolet radiation here to cause those ions to uh, stream off of the comet and go further out beyond the comet um, and that's um, that's uh, uh, what the deal is with those plasma tails and they're called plasma because they're just the electrons uh, from the atom they're the ionized electrons uh, that are zipping off in that direction uh, so if you have any further questions you can ask about that Jose please do because I want to make sure that uh, you uh, you understand. Okay, so here is Casper. We are guiding. Let me go in here to show that, prove it to you. All right, we'll enter that. As you can see, we're guiding here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a uh, I'm going to do a 40 second exposure here. Okay, of this beautiful dark nebula region a dark nebula region that I think would probably eventually uh, foster potential life there's our plasma tail there again on the comet our sensor is acquiring the image it's not overlaying this this is just a buffer so um, once I clear this it's just waiting for the next image to be read out off the sensor and okay, if you look down here, you'll see our sensor is running at minus 19.8 Celsius. So we are running a cooled sensor to eliminate noise. But here comes the Casper. Ready? Boom. And it's there. Boom. I'm waiting for it to show up. <laughs> boom, boom, there we boom. go. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> okay, there's the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. And uh, if we zoom out, you'll see something really important, and that is that you have a red spot up here in the corner. What is that? That's the edge of what Daryl was telling you about before. The edge of Barnard's Loop, the remnant of an ancient supernova. Very cool. And when we do our mosaic, we're going to go off in that direction, so... Uh, when we actually do this mosaic, um, we're going to take pictures in this direction here. So we're going to do this picture, then go up here, capture this, and the upper left of it, and, and keep going and making a, a staggered uh, image, a uh, mosaic that will all link together. Hey, Drop a Deuce, how you doing? And Bucky Barnburner, what's up? Yes, and he's uh, Bucky's just giving some uh, final factoids about the plasma tail versus the dust tail. Thank you. Wow, it's pretty quick. This is looking nice. We okay. That was a dog. That had to be Snickers. What did was what that did Snickers she do? shaking? Oh, how did you hear that? Yes, I can hear the ears <laughs> slapping. <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, she's been laying here with me in the office. She's just getting up now and. Uh... Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> that was funny. So there, you can see this is beautiful, and um, we can actually work on this a little bit, and I can enhance it. I'll show you how I'm gonna enhance it in a bit here. I'm just gonna bring this in, darken this up a little. So now you can see this beautiful detail. This this is little fingers of dark nebula, and this is an extremely cold region of space. 
All right, it's very cold here. Only a few, uh, a few degrees above absolute zero out here. And inside this nebula here, these stars uh, have blue light, of course. They have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and they go in violet light. And as they give off that light, what this dust is, this brownish dust you're seeing here, is made of carbon atoms. It's made of silica and, and so forth. And then there's molecules of these things together with others, uh, you know, such as the calciums and magnesiums, things that were made in the hearts of stars. It's a slurry of fundamental materials from which planets are made amid all the hydrogen gas, which is what the red stuff is that you see out here. Okay. The hydrogen gas is going to be used to make stars, and then the dust will be used to make planets eventually, potentially. So when we look at stuff like this, we see, I see, future worlds uh, in 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 the process of being in the process of being uh, realized. You know. So this is what I like. Hello, desert dweller. Dean Bostador is with us, and hello to Mazif, Mazif, or Mazif. How are you guys doing tonight? We have uh, 50 of you watching. This is fantastic. Keep up the good work. And Bullwinkle's here with us. Nice to see you. I think we need to get up to about 100 tonight. What do you think? Well, I'm happy to do that. Do okay. It. <laughs> do it. Yeah. So... Um, so I want to just to let you know, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be in Pasadena, uh, because I will be going to the alien con conference. I have to do a couple of panels and they have me do a talk and, um, I gave them a list of the talks I could do and they unanimously picked, um, literally my favorite talk to do. And, and that is my unorthodox history of the earth where I show the entire history of the earth on a roll of toilet paper that I go out into the audience and unroll around the audience and have them help me do it. And so we learn about the entire history of the earth. And so it's 120 feet long from the time the earth forms to the point at which we're in the room at that point, at which I put on there. And uh, what's interesting is the time from today to when dinosaurs died on that scale where the formation was 120 feet ago is less than 12 inches away. Dinosaurs died 12 inches ago. And what that shows you is that dinosaurs are actually recent history, not ancient history. That is cool. That seats in your mind. That shows you where it's coming from. And then you see that oxygen started forming in our atmosphere way, way down near the end of the toilet paper, two and a half billion years ago, halfway to the beginning. And that shows you that um, this oxygen was a beacon that was transmitted to the universe for billions of years. And any advanced civilization worth its capability will see that. And if they're carbon-based, like I believe most of them are, right, I'm a carbon bigot, absolutely, I'm prejudiced I'm about carbon, what can I tell you? Then what it means to me is that they will look for oxygen because oxygen will help keep their systems operational it's what they need to produce energy and to process uh, energy oxygen is the key it's the oxygen is the third most abundant element in the universe and carbon is number four okay so it stands to reason oxygen and carbon will play major roles it's hydrogen and helium at the top right so in any case um, carbon life is probably the norm in the universe. And that's why I wrote a book called The Populated Universe, and it, it talks about life being the rule, not the exception in the universe for all the reasons of carbon, you know? Uh, and when we look at these clouds, you're looking at carbon and silicate clouds, carbon and silicon, uh, which is why it's dark and it looks brown. I just think it's beautiful. Mark, I just sent you I a see picture. That. What was that? Well, this is a variation on what I've sent you before. This is a deep exposure of Orion. Uh, oh, I yes. was wondering if you could show them just to the upper left of Alnitak in the image there. 
you can see Casper, you can see Bernard's Loop, and you can see the Boogeyman just above yeah. the upper left of uh, Bernard's Loop. Well, I'll tell you what, I will do that because we are currently exposing this, and we'll check it out. All right, so let's do that. So let me show you what he's showing you. So there we go. This is Barnard's Loop right here. Mm -hmm. This is the Belt of Orion, Alnatak, Alalam, and Mintaka. There's Betelgeuse, soon to go supernova. Hope it happens soon. Okay. And uh, the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula is right. Is it there? Or no, it's right. Yes, right here. That's, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, and this is Barnard's Loop. So we're taking a picture in this square right here. Then we're going to go up and take a picture of this square right here. And then we'll go up and take a picture of this square right here. And look at that thing. That is LDN 1622, otherwise known as the Boogeyman Nebula. Yeah. And that is outstanding. This whole region is just festering with hydrogen gas clouds glowing red, uh, small dust grains scattering starlight that makes them glow blue. Okay. This here we imaged the, actually the other night. This is called the Witch's Head Nebula. It's right to the right of Rigel. Rigel's responsible for the scattered light that's making this visible. Uh, this, these dust grains are responsible, I should say, for scattering the light from Rigel. So it's something else. It's really pretty. But that's, uh, that's how Orion really looks when you take an overall picture of it. Oh, yeah. I wanted people to see the Bernard's Loop and get a feel for it. Yeah. Uh, and how the Boogeyman and Casper are straddling it on either side. Yeah, let's actually... And then uh, how, if you imagine where they're about the rough uh, center of that semicircle of Bernard's Loop is, you get an idea of where the supernova went off in the past. Right. Uh, down near the Orion Nebula. Anyway, thank you. Sure. I'm going to... Uh, I enjoy that. I th that's a cool picture. It is. It is. I want to... Uh, I want to uh, actually do something here with it. All right. I'll, I'll come back to it. But anyway, in any case, so this is a close-up of that region that we just looked at, courtesy of Daryl. And um, you can see uh, that we've got 15 frames stacked. That's the number you see right there, 15. <clears throat> also visible... Uh, down here, 15 stacked. Okay. Uh, you can't see that now. Hold on. Okay. Why is that? Hmm. Just a second. Oh, sorry. Now you can. My mistake. Okay. Uh, so we're still doing it. So you can see 15 stacked down here. 16 now. And let's, uh... Let's uh, zoom in on this, and let's carefully do some processing here. Let's pull out some of this detail. That's just crazy. That's beautiful. All right. You see our colors are actually really vibrant. Um, and let's do this. Okay, so that's unprocessed effectively. And now we're gonna do a little processing to show what's really going on back here in the background. Here we go. Look at all that stuff down here. A lot of amazing stuff going on here. Really cool. And we have 18 frames shot here. Nice. Wow. 
kind of see a figure and all that now. Like, uh, there's two dark nebulosity arms above it, like he's got his arms spread above his head. And uh, some of it goes below him. Yeah, that's one. That's the other. It's like he's holding his arms up. Okay. And then uh, the figure continues down below. These are like the back right here? Or the, well, that'd be like his legs, I think. Okay. Uh, oh, so this is the figure with his arms up. This is his body. Uh, and then this goes to the legs. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Actually, I see a face with eyebrows. Look at this. There's the eye. There's the eyebrow. Yep. There's the mouth and the nose. The other eye and the other eyebrow. It's kind of like a angry baboon. <laughs> uh, maybe when you get the mosaic put together, that uh, it'll look sort of like he's waving at or jumping at the uh, boogeyman. That could be true. But see all this this beautiful these beautiful clouds here, guys. This is the stuff that. Uh, it really is the stuff that uh, is the basis for life in the universe right here this stuff this looks really pretty and we're going to uh, uh, call this the M78 mosaic all right And this object we're looking at right here is the Casper the Friendly Ghost. Or M78. Thank you, Sean. Oh, thanks, Sean. That's the That's second, second one he's done tonight, yeah. at least. Oh, that wow. is so cool. Thank, Thank you. you, Sean. So here's what we're doing, just so you know throw that out there interesting desert dweller which common image did you use the color correct Oh, see, that's so much better. Okay, now you actually, with, with the proper color correction, you can see how the hydrogen gas mingles with the dust and gives it sort of a reddish cast. Hey, old, old Dusty, how you doing? Thanks for being a first-time watcher. Make sure you subscribe and hang out with us. I mean, look at the stuff we're seeing. This is live, man. This is a live universe. We're looking at the Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula right now. We've got uh, 20 or so, 23 stack. Uh, so I'll take the ob object ID out there for a moment. Uh, we'll save this. Uh, Casper the Friendly M78. It's also known as Mesher 78. So this will be up there exactly as seen. You will get to take it down here in just a few seconds if you want. Again, go to skytourlive.org and... Uh, Go to our live stream at the upper left or go to our Patreon at the upper right. Join us, support us. And down below, if you scroll down, you get to our our uh, online server with everything on it. All right. Okay, beautiful. Okay, we're going to go to 25 and then we're going to stop. And then we're going to go up to the upper left. We're going to grab more of Barnard's loop. When we're all said and done, we will be going back to the comet uh, at, at some point, I promise, because we got to check that out, too. There's 25, so we're going to pause it now. We'll save this. Okay. Save it exactly as seen. Right. There we go. All right. Now we can get rid of our stack here and go back to our night vision mode. This may just make a very striking image when you're done. I would hope so. When you build a mosaic. I hope so. <clears throat> All right. All right, so now uh, we will go do our one second night vision mode shot. Okay, now uh, we're going to go back to our 
uh, planetarium program. I don't really have to, though. As I realize, I may not have to. You see that bright star in the very up le upper left-hand corner? Uh, upper left-hand corner? Yeah. You mean here? Upper left-hand corner. I don't see it. Are you talking about that star? That star. I'd try to drag that star right in the middle of the frame. Oh, I think you're right. I mean, that's 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 what I was thinking. But uh, I was thinking I was going to use the uh, the uh, the. Uh, I might not. I might lose track of that star though because it's so small. We'll f we'll figure it out. All right. Let's. Uh... All right. I think it went a little too far. Uh, I went too far, and that's because I had the telescope moving too quickly. Oh well. Yeah, I know. I screwed up. I'm, I'm we'll be fine. All right, let's get back above. All right, so all right, let's skip back to our cast for the friendly ghost location, and we'll go back again. Do this. Waiting for our internet to come back here. We're actually using Starlink tonight, which is uh, sometimes problematic. There we go. So let's go back to this. Where is it going? All right. Okay, now there's the star you were talking about. So now what I can do is actually do what I'm supposed to do and um, go back to just getting uh, a slow motion control out of this instead of the fast that I did. Alright, so now this star is right there but we're going to try to move this star and move it down to here. We'll see if we can still see it. Uh, in other words, as I move you we got to keep our eye on it. Softy, softy catchy monkey. Yeah, I still see it. It's a double so we can actually see it right there. <clears throat> I like doing this stuff manually, you know? This is kind of cool. Alright. Here we are. I'll move it over just a little more. There we go. Alright. And now, let's go north. No, oh, sorry. That's the right way. Yes. Okay. Um, a little more. Maybe there. I see Barnard's loop is in here, so Yeah. Let's Sure, uh, why not? Okay, let's do that. So we're gonna get us guiding. We're guiding now. Alright. And 
what we'll do now is do another, how was it, did you say 40 seconds? I forgot what how. were you on, uh, 35, 40? Yeah, I think it was, uh, 35. All right, we'll do 35 seconds. It doesn't uh, beyond. It doesn't matter. It just matter how much noise we uh, remove. And by stacking, we're making an image sandwich, and the more images we stack, the less noise we'll see. So uh, we're gonna do this now. We're we're order, we're doing a beautiful stack right now. So we'll bring up our live stack, and look at that. That's really pretty. Wow. And there's that pair of stars that we're gonna get. Uh, going with those are about here now so this we're gonna see the loop is gonna be dominating our view here in just a minute so we'll clear this we have 10 seconds left in this one hey Papa Tom well, I was just gonna say hey Papa Tom it's great to see you nice to be able to verbally say hello for a change I know right <laughs> oh look at that wow. Oh, wow oh my gosh wow Barnard's loop is looking really good there. Yep. Nice. Wow, that's crazy amazing. Isn't that pretty? Isn't this pretty, Marianne? It's just beautiful. It's got a star cluster there, too. Yeah, it's got the star cluster right there. And what star cluster is that, actually? Let's go in and see. NGC 2112. See, because uh, remember this this red box is telling you where we are looking. All right, and so if we zoom out a little bit. It's NGC 2112, and that's the cluster that's right there. Wow, that's something else. And we we're just over here, so we're going to here, and then we're going to go over there. Right, because that's... The next thing is this guy up here. Yeah. So that's pretty, pretty good, man. All right. So we're centered on that. Let's, um, let's do a color balance. There we go. And let's try and. Very cool pick all by itself. It is. Barnard's loop is looking great. You still have that Orion? Uh, I do. Image I sent you. I do. Uh, don't, I wanted to try and. Uh, trying to. Uh, okay, let me see. No, it's okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, I should be able to get at it. Give me a second. Do you want to try and find it here? Meanwhile, you guys keep watching the screen and watch this stuff grow up there. There we go. Uh, that's got to be it. Oh, yeah. So, your pointer. Yeah. Right there. Uh huh. All right, let me uh, show. Oh, we got a satellite that went just right through that. Look at that. That's okay. Uh, let me just show you real quick what we're looking at. Okay, this is uh, this region right here. See that? Okay, so we are actually in... Uh, we're looking at this region right here. So if we go back to our shot, right? You can see that we're looking at this area right here and pulling in detail of it right there. And literally, uh, we will be... We're looking right there. So that's pretty cool. Nice indeed. That's a great shot. 
That's a beautiful shot. That was nicely too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you. That's good. The satellite looks like it just crossed out the. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's crossing the it out. That's funny. That's great. Perfect timing. Perfect. Mm. Yeah. It's unfortunate timing, right? <laughs> okay. So we can actually try to see, add some enhancement to this. Okay, so you can actually see things sharper and clearer. Very nice. And we'll be looking next up here, where the next object is that's going to be part of this. As we go on, the satellite trails are going to disappear. And that's because the subsequent data that's coming in, our image sandwich I keep telling you about, this satellite trail was here for just one shot, one frame. So as you notice, it's already dimming out. That's because the shot of the, the, the color of the nebula is replacing it with every shot because that's coming to the top, coming to the top, coming to the top. Noise, like satellite trails, goes away. And that's what we're seeing happen right here. All right. As you keep the images, the image count the same, that makes it the same for mosaicing. Uh huh, it is. Okay, so this is, uh, this is Barnard's Loop, right? And Barnard's Loop is. Uh, that ancient supernova remnant and it is above and to the left of measure 78 so we're just looking at that location right now all right now uh, just so you can see what else we can do here I could actually uh, I could actually remove this guy all right and I could actually maximize this guy remove my telescope from the view for now and bring this in uh, bigger so you guys can see it and see what we're doing and I'll pop out the name because uh, we already know what we're doing here so we can pull that out all right so now you can see Barnard's loop developing here all 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 by itself and it really is pretty Mark, wow. excuse me a second sir. sure right back. okay Wow, this is something. What do you think, Marianne? Oh, it's beautiful. I just love it. When um, when will we see? Well, maybe we already did the um, get the pictures where the satellite is gone. I still see it. Uh, as we have to let time go on. Okay, we've got a few more. It's, it's we're at thirteen right now, and we have to go to twenty-five. Uh, and by that time, I imagine that much of this is going to end up being uh, overlaid by subsequent data. Um, so right in the center here, it's almost gone here in the middle now. And that's going to keep happening. And remember, in the dark areas, you say, well, I'll never overlay in the dark areas. And that's not true because what's coming in behind it is dark stuff. The next exposure doesn't have a satellite trail there. It has the dark of space, and it just keeps getting overlaid and overlaid and overlaid, and over time, they disappear. Hey, Dark Window, Arizona, how's it going? Oh. Where, Dark Window, Arizona, where in Arizona are you? Since I'm in Arizona, I'm in Mesa. And since the telescope is in Arizona, it's out yep. in the Sonoran Desert. That's cool. <clears throat> Yeah, Mark, let me ask you, you of 
course, everybody probably in the chat knows this, but uh, um, there is a very large, um, I don't know if it's a star or planet, but there's also a halo around this around it at about 11 o'clock. Yeah, that yes. guy. Yeah. Um, the stars, this has a faint halo too, if you notice. Um, our system is a, a wide field system. Uh, let me actually show you the extent, okay, uh, because it's kind of important to, to see the extent. And um, so I'll do it this way. So here, all the way, this is the full field. This is four full moons across. Okay, so that's over two degrees. And then it's three full moons tall. So it's one and a half degrees by, by two, just over two degrees. This is a large field. So uh, anytime you have a large field, it means uh, in general that the telescope is photographically very fast. It can acquire and lay down images very, very quickly. This telescope is no different. And stars being very bright, what they'll sometimes do is they induce these artifacts. And so these halos are artifacts around the star that the, the imaging system produces. Not all stars do it, as you notice. Only the very brightest stars do it. And sometimes they're horribly uh, overblown. We see that a lot, for instance, the planet Mars. Uh, Mars is only a dot on our imager because it's so small compared to the size of our field. However, it makes several concentric rings that look like explosive donuts. It's just crazy. But that's just the nature of the, uh, the physical system, unfortunately. And uh, we can't help that. But we do have another telescope coming. And that other telescope is indeed going to be a, what we call a longer focal length, meaning that it's not going to be as wide field. Uh, in fact, its field might be only about this big. So we'll be able to concentrate and focus on things and see them bigger. And what we're going to do is see the wide field system like you see here. And then you'll see the close-up system at the same time. We'll have both telescopes running uh, at the same time. And they don't have to be in the same place. They could be uh, widely separated by, uh, you know, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles. Uh, uh, but they could be looking at the same thing. And that's what we're going to do. Yep, I hope so. Hey, by the way, yes. Dark Window, that he says he's in Wickenburg, and I know exactly who that is. And Mark, you know exactly who that is. Is that Jim? You got it. <laughs> that's him. <laughs> Hi, Jim. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, I was just talking to him on um, uh, texting and told him to get on the stream, and he did. So that's awesome to have him on tonight. I'd like to welcome Jim to the to the uh, stream, uh, Dark Window, Arizona. Jim is, uh, uh, he was a, and, and still may be a very important player within the Mutual UFO Network. Uh, and for many years, he's uh, been active and uh, done great things for the organization. So I, my hat's off to you, Jim, and publicly state that uh, it's good to see you here, my friend. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Rocket City Astro, that's Michael Clegas, says if you look carefully, uh, I think that's what you're referring to, Michael, you can see these uh, little wires here uh, they, these 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 lines, dark lines, those are the wires going to the camera. You say, well, what what are the wires going to the camera for? What's going on? Well, unfortunately, um, well, I say fortunately, because it's a wide-angle system, our camera's on the front of the telescope. So the light goes down, hits a main mirror, comes up through a lens system, and goes to the camera directly, and the camera has wires going to it. So uh, that, unfortunately, is, is what that's for. Let's go back to our telescope view here for a minute. Let's pop that out. Okay. Um, and you can see over there down below, we have 23 stacked. We're almost to 25. And uh, let me just bring my stack up and dock it to the bottom again. All right. When you see that ring around that bright star, that's actually... Uh... You're seeing the silhouette of the camera and the cables on the corrector plate at the front end of the telescope. Yeah, we just said that. <laughs> Not in so many words. Yeah, okay. That's true. I didn't say those exact words. 
I was going to show a picture of it, too. Um, I think I might have a photo to show Daryl that gives people an idea uh, what we're looking at so they can see it. But I want to... We've got one more exposure here to go. Uh, so I want to make sure that I don't miss the 25th shot. I won't miss it. I want to shut it off at the right time. Okay, here we go. This is the one we want to look in. All right. So we'll come back here for now. And we got the 25. All right. And we'll pause it. Once we get the 25. There we go. 25 exposures done. Pause. Save it. And it's going to be a part of M78 Mosaic. And save exactly as seen. All right. And now we'll go back to... Uh, well, before we do that... Let's first go, I was going to go show you what I wanted to show you. I'm going to just grab a, a shot here. Uh, not that. Uh, grab a shot to show you. Um, there we go. I'm just going to show you the, the system. And this is the system uh, without uh, the uh, shield on the front. There's a shield that protects the uh, lens and the, the whole corrector and everything, the lens plate. But this is it. This is the telescope that's delivering these images you're seeing tonight. Uh, this is the camera. These are the cables. That is the lens system. That's what Daryl was mentioning before. That's a piece of glass called a corrector plate. That's a quarter inch thick piece of glass. That's a specific shape and uh, machine. And this is the main telescope. We're looking at about, I'd say, maybe 300 pounds right there uh, overall with everything um, and so that's it now there's a much longer barrel on this because there's a there's a, a shield that protects all this that's not on here at this point uh, but this is the automated not auto, well it's the remote system that we have there that's uh, showing you all these things okay here's another view of it right there that's the camera sticking off so you know we got some really interesting stuff going on there all right uh, okay, so beautiful. So now um, we have to decide where we're gonna go next, Daryl. Um, LDN. I would. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. I was gonna say LDN 1622 is like directly above, but I think we want to go kind of up. Uh, you know, right about like right to there. I think would be good. You know, you think. Because there, there is the boogie band right there. We're going on a... tie in just a little bit. Uh, Maybe a little down like this? Yeah. Okay, good idea. All right. So we're telling the telescope to just go to that position. All right. So the telescope, you watch the telescope, it, it'll move a tiny bit. All right. And uh, we'll go and do our night vision mode. And once it all comes back, you'll see that the telescope will be moving there. All right. And this is going to be the area where this object we want to see is located. Um, and I think... I'll just take a quick shot to confirm where we are. I think we're right where we need to be. Actually, if we see that star, let's go look. I'll figure this out real fast. We got those three there. All right. So if we're here, yeah, there we are. Okay, so so that's 56 Orion. It's that, that star right there. And then these two guys right here are these two right here. All right. So uh, we're exactly where we said we should be so we have now in the middle here we have the boogeyman nebula and we have a little bit down below to the right of the barnard's loop which is why you see yeah. this shape so now you'll see the rest of the other side of that red hydrogen supernova remnant cloud okay 35 seconds now 35 seconds on the clock and off we go 
And by the way, uh, most nights we don't actually do mosaics. We're doing it tonight because uh, we thought it'd be kind of nice to do a few mosaics uh, once in a while, and that's what we're doing. All right, so we'll pull up our live stack. And the live stack, this is the last shot we did. Now we're up here to the upper left, all right? And so we've got about 10 seconds left. So we'll clear this stack. And there it is. Wow. Looks like we might have to Looks like we're going to have to go a little more to the upper left there, Daryl. Because there's the nebula, but it's kind of going off the edge. So we're going to stop this and reorient this a little bit. Okay. You want to move the boogeyman a little farther to the left? And, and down. I want to, I want to, oh. I want to bring us down here a little bit Very pull the good. boogeyman here so this star here is going to go down near the middle and just about right to here right. I think that's going to be perfect so Marianne you still with us who me <laughs> yeah <laughs> I am barely I'm okay. hanging on this is this is amazing I'm just kind of watch it. I want to watch the boogeyman and then I'm probably going to be heading to bed. Okay. That's fair enough. Let me uh, just go back here for one second. Okay. So that has to move down more. Okay. Gotcha. All right. All right, Marianne. That sounds good. Let me uh, just uh, let me just do that for you all right so now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, move our telescope north a little bit and that's gonna bring everything down just a little bit and then we're gonna move it a little to the left yeah which is meaning that we're going to move the telescope a tiny bit to the west. So that means this way. All right. That should be good. I think that should work. Maybe one more yeah. jog. Ah, that's good. All righty. So let's try this. We'll go back on 35 second shot here. We're guiding. Calibrations of zeros. Now let us stabilize a little bit. I found that letting it stabilize is very important. And Papa Tom said he didn't know you were on here with us, Marianne. Well, I said hi, but he probably didn't know it was me. So, oh, yes, that's... Papa Tom, I am here. That's right. <laughs> As you know, Marianne Rob is one of the movers and shakers of Sky Tour live streams. She's uh, one of the founders, so she is uh, very important to everything that we do. Tara Daulis is the other one who is very important to everything that we do, uh, and so um, that is uh, why I like to uh, give them credit, kudos, thanks whenever I can. I appreciate that. Um... Yeah, the reason I'm going to be signing off here pretty quick is we do have a big meeting coming up uh, tomorrow morning for our nonprofit for Sky Tour live stream. So I'm excited. We have our second big meeting. So we're getting there, <clears throat> slow but sure. Yeah. yeah, we're going to talk about all kinds of things, including potential Sky Tour products, maybe. I'm not sure. Oh, heck yeah. It's, guys, it's <clears throat> coming together. I do want to thank Robin wow. for everything that she has done. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, I, I've got to say, I know Mark has shown you guys some of the products we have, but um, there's a couple of the things that uh, both Mark and I have received on sample products. Uh, some sneakers, as he calls them back east. If you're 
out here in the West. It's I'm wearing them. Tennis shoes. I'm wearing them. Um, they are so cool. I am so excited to show you guys. So everybody just please be patient. Um, oh my gosh, as soon as we get squared away, um, we have got, no joke, probably 60 different products. Yeah, let me show you the shoes, look. We are ready, yes. Please. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Oh, it's the bottom don't of my shoes. Fall. Ah, hold on. Don't fall off the chair, please. I won't, I won't. Maybe I can do it this way, hold on. <laughs> Why don't you just take the shoe off? And show them. See, that's, uh -oh. that's the sole nebula. Okay. And I, 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 I'd have to take the shoe off to show you, that's right. But, uh... <laughs> I gotta wear them. I gotta, you know what I gotta do? I gotta wear them to make sure that they're gonna work for everybody. If they don't, then uh, we we don't take them. We we redesign them. Do something different. Oh yeah, they're very quality, very great quality. And matter of fact, we do have men's sizes and we just made women's sizes. So um, I would say probably within the next two months, at the most two months, we will have the okay to just start selling all the products um, that we have. When I, I'm excited to do that. And again, I thank everybody to be on the stream. I thank you all um, for all the support you've given us, especially Mark. I mean, I'm just coming into this and Tara's just coming into this. And Mark, you've done this, what, now three, four years going on? Yeah, at least. And this is so cool. So it is awesome. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's like, you know, I get a degree in astronomy and I could sit there and just hide in my basement and read astronomy books and do research. Or I could do what I always wanted to do and that's take it to the masses and, and bring it to people. So everything I've done is for the purpose of making astronomy mainstream, bring it to people into their living rooms, turn it into a movie, like you're watching a movie. We're gonna watch the universe tonight. What? We're gonna watch the universe tonight. Where are you gonna do that? This guy through live stream. You know? There's this guy Daryl that knows a lot of stuff. There's this other people these other people that come on and you know they talk about astronomy and they, they know their stuff and it's really cool to see them do it. You know, and that's that's what we're all about. So true. Hey Papa Tom, real quick, is uh, he's asking how much right now we're not sure it's definitely not going to be something that's going to break your bank um but we don't know exactly how much we're going to be charging uh for the shoes but we will know very very soon no oh my gosh I mean, imagine a blanket for your bed <laughs> a bed spread yes. with a giant nebula on it I, I can't believe it but but uh it, robin made one of those and actually bought it and it's just amazing to see this gigantic Christmas tree nebula, okay, with the cone nebula and the Foxford nebula on it. And it's like a, it's a blanket, you know, um, you can, you can get everything from polo shirts to underwear, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, holy cow. I mean, we could go crazy. And of course, naturally mugs like this is a travel mug, uh, that I, 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 I uh, got all right this is a uh, this is a seagull nebula it has a name on it it's a seagull nebula I know it's hard to see and then of course we have our you know sky through live stream and sky through uh, live.org logo uh, it's a great it's a great travel mug and I tell you it seals up really tight too if you drop it it nothing comes out how, ask me how I know <laughs> yeah. yeah hello Sam S how you doing? Josh Rutledge is here. Hey, Josh. What's going on, brother? Josh Rut Rutledge has a great show, too. You should see Josh Rutledge's show. Um, uh, and I was on their show. They actually sent me a nice travel mug, too. Uh, I think it was the Convergence uh, Zone. Is that what it was? Josh, you know, uh, you're a, you can send up a link if you want, please. Go ahead. Plug your stuff. Sam S. says the blanket needs to glow in the dark. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> I have to tell you, okay, what does an astronomer do in this time off? I'll tell you what I do. Um, 
I painted 3,000 stars in glow-in-the-dark paint on the ceiling. And during the day, it looks perfectly normal. Turn off the lights at night, and the roof has been lifted off the house. I even painted in negative space so you could see the silhouettes of trees. All right? And you see the stars through the trees. Uh, and it's, it was so peaceful that I could sit up there for hours and just sit in the total quiet of that room and just stare at the sky. And I literally got to the point where I was waiting to see meteors. <laughs> it was so cool. It was so realistic to me. Now, yes, there were no colors. It was all that green glowing the dark stuff, but they, it's very faint. Uh, you know, the Convergence Enigma. Thank you, Josh. And check out the Convergence Enigma from Josh Rutledge. You see it right here. ConvergenceEnigma.com. Your one-stop location for the coolest topics. These guys really do a great job. Uh, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Mark, Daryl, I think I am going to call it a night. I'm sorry. Not a problem. You're up later than you ex you, you normally are. It's it's a it's a whole nine o'clock out there. <laughs> nine fifteen. Hey, hey, hey! It's nine fifteen. Let's get it right. But uh, early, early morning tomorrow. So I want to thank everybody for allowing me to come on your show. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Daryl. This has been a wonderful. This has been so cool. No, that's and, fine. That's uh, great. Not, you have a good night. I'm glad shall, you could join and, us, Marianne. Yes, thank you so much, and I will see all the everybody in chat again. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow night. Okay. Good night. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. See you later, Marianne. Sweet dreams. Yeah, she's uh, uh, very amazing. Um, I didn't want to say it while she was still in the air, but uh, when she was a police officer, I went on a ride along with her, and. Um, uh, she wanted me to get out in direct traffic, but she didn't have a vest for me, so I didn't get out because I wasn't going to risk my life uh, without a vest because no one knows who the heck I am unless I have this stupid vest on. Uh, so it was funny. Uh, but um, those of you that know also know that I uh, I was recovering from surgery uh, some years ago, and uh, I couldn't exactly uh, run. You know, I kind of looked like a, a person that needed assistance when I ran because I didn't have... Uh, full control over all my limbs yet so to speak well anyway um marianne uh, has made incessant fun of me about that because <laughs> i saw a car accident and i said look car accident and she goes come on we gotta go and she runs to the car like a like a freaking jackrabbit and i'm going clop 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 because i couldn't run yet so <laughs> And so she made fun of me forever for that. She still does. If I didn't want to say it on the air, she would have. Anyway, ah, this is she's beautiful. Still here. Huh? She's still here. She's remarking on oh, what you oh, were saying. Oh, I will tell you all the truth later on. <laughs> good night, Marianne. Good night, Marianne. Go to bed and good night. Yeah. Don't yeah. remember a thing now. <laughs> Okay, so now this guy pushed his little ID out there for you. This is the Boogeyman Nebula. It's a dark nebula. It's just to the upper left of Barnard's Loop. You can see the edge of Barnard's Loop right here. Okay. All right. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is looking nice, Daryl. Yeah, it is. Let me see if I can pull out some more detail here. Let's let's do this. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Now let's uh, darken the background stars a little bit. Just a little. This is good. So what you notice, guys, let me uh, zoom in on this a little bit for you. 
Yes. You have uh, the red kind of pumped up in the other two, didn't you? Uh. Well, this this is I I didn't do anything different to this one. I don't believe. Let me just pull it to here. Uh, you see that. You see the dark nebula here. Okay, you'll see that where it's darkest, that's where it's densest. All right. Now, what's that density mean? Does that density mean that if you flew into it, you'd like go ah, all this dust? No, you probably wouldn't notice any dust around you. Uh, and here's the weird thing. In this, the dust is not very dense to the point where you uh, would be in danger if you flew your ship through it very fast. Like at say 40,000 miles an hour, uh, if you fly through Saturn's rings and you strike some of the ice particles, they're going to act like bullets and really poke holes in your spacecraft. But they sent Cassini through Saturn's rings with no problem because they knew that the separation between particles in there was immense. But from all those millions and millions of miles away from Saturn that we are, okay, we know that the density of the rings is very, very low. And so we flew Cassini right through Saturn's rings, never touched a particle, right? Well, the same thing is even in this darkest, most dense part of this dark nebula, you can fly through that with your ship and probably never hit a particle because it's, again, this is several light years long, don't forget. So these particles are spread across many light years, okay, typically. So the density uh, is um, that you might have, like in air, you have, oh gosh, 100 million million atoms per cubic centimeter, right? And in a, a nebula like this, atoms, okay, you might only have between 30 and a few hundred per cubic centimeter atoms okay and every now and then you'll have a molecule of carbon or a molecule of of uh, of a silicate particle a silicate uh, compound and but they're few and far between so you could go zipping through here and not ever hit one most likely but that's still enough to then coalesce and form dense knots of material that you couldn't fly through. And those are the things that would become uh, stars and planets. All right. But when they're out here spread out like this, you have all this material and it's spread across vast distances. So a little perspective on that. Can we zoom in on that reflection and be lost to you a bit? Yeah, that's funny you mentioned that because I was actually coming in because I want to look at this too. But let's move up here and do what you asked first. Well, we can see uh, it's like a little dark spiral inside that. Uh, you mean here? Reflection that we lost the. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how far we can zoom in before it gets bad. It's only at fifty percent. Okay. This is sixty-one uh, percent. Twenty-four now. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Oh, we twenty-four. Are at yeah, 20, yeah, twenty-four, 24 exposures. Uh, Josh, that nebula has a lot of mass. As Mark said, it's it's spread really thin, but it's very large. There's a lot of mass in that nebula, and yes, it has some gravity. Yes, these these could uh, gravitationally condense. These knots of material could gravitationally condense. You're at 25 now. Yeah, I already saved it. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, so I got you covered. Thanks. Thank you for that. Yeah, so the Boogeyman Nebula here, if you notice, it's a very, very interesting nebula. Very interesting. And let's see what's really here. Let's pump this up a bit so when we pump it up one of the things you'll notice is that we have stuff trailing off in the back side here 
and you can't really see it but there's a whole bunch of, of lighter lighter particles out in here and in other processing and the final processing I can pull those out and you see them that's really cool let's see what else is hiding in here let's see if this shows us pop this up here a little I'll be right back all right <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm going to pull us in. So you can really get an idea of what's out there. <clears throat> okay. Beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Now that we've done this, we have our mosaic imagery. Hello, Gladys. How are you? I hope that you will uh, subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe and join us. And hello, California Dreamin'. I know you. And look at that lucky little dog in the image. Is the nebula the result of a star exploding? No, this this nebula here is a result of... Okay, no, you're right, actually. This nebula actually is caused by the explosion of many stars that littered the cosmos with their guts, basically, in a supernova explosion. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, I I thought you were going to... I thought you meant, is this the result of... A, is this a supernova remnant? It's not. It's, uh, it's actually just a, uh, a, a dust cloud formed from the internals uh, of other stars that have previously exploded and left their guts all over the place. In our previous image, we actually captured this beautiful uh, edge of a supernova remnant, which is this right here. And then we, it was an arc that came through because we went down and we actually did a, a beautiful mosaic so far. Michael says, Mark, you promised a Starlink video oh thank you for mentioning that I went out tonight and I did indeed uh, capture a Starlink video for you guys I want to show it to you so I'm going to do that and uh, where is it it's over here somewhere there it is all right so I'll put that over here all right so let me show you that all right so I'm gonna bring up our other screen and here we go. All right, this is that, and let's uh, maximize it. So I was using my uh, my little. Uh, <clears throat> we don't need this. I was using my Aurora Sport from Psyonix and captured this beautiful string of satellites. I'm going to hold it still so you can see. Look at that going across the sky right there. This is Cassiopeia. This is the double cluster up here. All right, this is the W of Cassiopeia, and there is the Starlink train. Last night, that Starlink train was a, a fourth of that length. All right, so that was uh, so. There we go. So now you can also see them trail off and and uh, fade out as they do. But this is night two. Now, they'll be visible tomorrow night as well. And California Dreamer says, Is it possible for your telescope to spot things like weather balloons or spy balloons in our atmosphere? If they're in the area, yeah, we can get quite a nice shot of them. Um, and um, if there's something in the sky, we can catch it. No doubt about it. <clears throat> if you look here, this is our... We captured the Starlink satellite train. Look at that. It's like they're marching right across the sky. You can understand why people who don't know that Starlink is launching all these satellites could like think that they're looking at an invasion fleet or something coming into our atmosphere. It almost looks very strange, doesn't it? Well, I shouldn't say almost. It does look very strange. At this end, you'll notice they're fading out because they're crossing Earth's Terminator. I know. Hold still, Mark. Hold still. I try. 
Okay, but then you see them fade out over here as they go across the Terminator. Yeah, beautiful. This is this is tonight. This is this is one of those things. Uh, I am on Reddit a fair bit, and it has gotten to be where nine times out of ten, if somebody posts, "Gee, what's that I saw in the sky?" The answer is Starlink. Yeah, you know, and as an astronomer, we know that Starlink uh, can be a problem, right? We know it's an issue for us, but on the other hand, we also know that Starlink is making it possible uh, for, well, I don't know, say, remote observatories out in the middle of the desert to have internet to produce shows and do uh, beautiful presentations like this one. <laughs> so that's uh, that's what we're all about with this. But that's pretty much it, and you know, basically, you'll see, uh, you know, the last ones are gone, they vanished, and that left just stars at the end. It was just a real pretty scene. So that's it. That was the uh, big excitement. <clears throat> and this is... Uh, we've actually gone through uh, 37 exposures here, so I'm actually going to save this again as well. And uh, that's really pretty. But we have 25 for purposes of the mosaic. This is going to be an additional one. I'll actually make this a separate one. I'll call this the uh, Boogeyman. Dean, they are super Isabella. Uh, let me uh, uh, post it in our group chat, and I can try to get it over to Mark. Uh, Dean, they're not always that visible. Soon after a launch, uh, they're still fairly close together in the sky, and you'll see trains like that of the satellites across the sky. They will all spread out and assume they're separate orbits, and yeah. uh, they won't be as visible in the future. <clears throat> Super Isabella. Did Isabella already do the mosaic? She did. <laughs> She was two-thirds done before you ever took this uh, image. I believe it. I believe it. No, she would already pasted the first two together. Nice. Well, let me know when you have it, and I'll, I'll uh, check it out. I will. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we saved this one now, and so this is uh, with that many. We're going to basically clear it now because we're going to get out and head to the next item that we want to check out. All right, and now we'll go into night vision mode. Ooh. Is ooh good or bad? Oh, it's good. All right. Uh, let me save this, and then I'll get it over to you. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's pull out of this guy here. And I see while we're here, um, I'd like to uh, I'd like to go down to show people, especially for our new friends who have just joined us, how it never gets old to see things like the Horsehead Nebula. So we'll check that out. Very nice, Isabella. All right, so we're going to go to the horse at Nebula now. You'll watch the telescope move over my head. Okay, there it goes. All right, and there is the flame right there. And the horse head right there. Let me know when you send it, Daryl. I will. In just a second. No problem. Okay, and let's uh, <clears throat> let's just move a little bit to the east here. <clears throat> and once you move to a little bit to the east, 
um, we'll start guiding again because there's a lot of detail in here that we want to see. Uh huh. This is a beautiful region. Here it comes. All right. Hey, Bucky, I like that analogy. Bucky says, the SpaceX final stage ejects the Starlink uh, satellites uh, in, uh, like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> and it really does. It's like, dunk, 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 dunk. <laughs> I bet you'll like this. Oh, man, this looks really good. All right, let's, uh, let's go check it out, guys. I'm going to show you. This is, this is the benefit of having people like Isabella on our side, okay? Um, I'm going to show you now what she just completed for us. All right? This is just a quick mosaic, right? But check it out while we're waiting for that. Look at this. Down here. This is our Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula down here. You're not actually seeing the whole thing. It's actually, uh, let me see if I can shrink this a little bit for you. Oh, that's Tara working on the telescope. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. Yeah, that's, that's the telescope work. Okay, let me uh, get out of there and bring this up again. Okay, there we go. So now what I'll do is I'll do this. Okay, there is the boogeyman. Okay. And down here, that's Barnard's Loop right there. And then to the right is the uh, beautiful uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost or Measure 78. Now I know you're aching to see all the rest. Well, me too. But the thing is... Um, we can fill those in. It doesn't have to be tonight. But I wanted you to see uh, this absolutely stunning image right here. That's really pretty. Really pretty. Uh, and there's there's more to this image that you're not able to see right now. Um, and I think I could probably show it to you if I do this. Yeah. Alright, so there's more here. And beautiful thank you Isabella for that that's beautiful it is thank you Isabella I can't wait to fill it in all right <clears throat> so let's do this now let's do a shot of the horse head we're gonna do a uh, 40 second shot all right and Alna talk is gonna blow out really brightly but don't worry about it <clears throat> we can fix that all right let's go actually back to our main screen here there we go you can actually see it in your little uh you're not doing yeah okay what this uh yeah you're still working on your first exposure yes you see sigma over there to the right right now in your little snapshot there but you can already see it it's a multiple star yeah It'll overexpose so much on a longer shot, you won't be able to see that. Okay. Talk about cutting it close. <clears throat> okay, so there's a lot going on in this image. All right. And what I'll do is... Uh, oh, I see what happened. Okay, this image will have to be started again. Um, because I didn't allow for the uh, telescope to adequately find a guide star. Here we go. Interesting. Okay, so let's see what this one looks like. Still searching. Yeah, but... Having trouble locking on? Yeah, it does that sometimes. You know, sometimes whatever's in its view, there's plenty of stars to pick from, right? But it looks like we got our we got our search now. Check out the flame nebula right here. Isn't this pretty? That's the flame. And what's nice about nice about the flame is uh, as we 
let me uh, process do a little process for you all right and get rid of this guy and get rid of that guy uh, maybe log here we go so now <clears throat> you'll notice you see all this detail in here all that taco course is very very bright and then of course we have um, down below all this we have the horse head nebula and when Daryl was talking about Sigma, he was talking about this one, Sigma Orionis. This is a multiple star system. Many stars are multiple star systems, right? And I think that when you talk about a multiple star system, um, you, you have to consider that it's a very complicated situation. You could have one star moving around another star. That's a single binary star, right? The typical binary, two components. You could have two stars going around each other and then together going around another star that's a triple star all right you can have two sets of two going around each other or orbiting each other and orbiting around a common center of gravity uh, that is like epsilon lira for instance um, a double double um, for instance so there are stars out there that, that have that quality some stars are so close you can't see them except in their spectra and those are called spectroscopic binaries um, and that's that's important um, to understand that you know most stars are not single stars like the Sun most stars are more than one and have more than one so um, whereas it's kind of rare uh, it's also prevalent enough that we could find many single stars with planets. Um, and we do. M-type stars are typically all alone. And they have, well, of the types of stars that are out there, they're the most common star in the universe. And they have the most planets as a result because they're, of course, the most populous in number. And this is beautiful. I mean, uh, let me just unzoom a little bit here. Yeah, that's really pretty. And now the uh, flame up here is starting to really show its true nature because uh, we have it now set up. So you're seeing much of the detail. You can see this beautiful reflection nebula up here. Well, no, you can't. Uh, and that's my fault because I've got my a little uh, time and date up there. If we remove that for a moment, now you can see it right here. There it is, right there. Beautiful. You see this beautiful nebula down here. This is just stunning. This is what is f this region's full of. Is it's full of this material. I'm noticing. Uh, that we actually had little wind out there earlier. Uh, I knew there was some wind. The temperature, uh, temperature. The wind is scheduled scheduled to be or slated to be around 21 miles per hour. So uh, I'm gonna let this continue to go, even though it's somewhat ruined by the wind. The stars are a little bit oblong. Hey Josh, thanks man. Good to see you. Thank you for coming out, and checking this out. Make sure you see the Convergence Enigma, Josh Rutledge's show. You got to check it out. Josh and Jose are leaving together. And Jose Santos, okay. Thank you for coming out. Great to see you. J-O-S-E and J-O-S-H. Okay. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> Actually, they're not the same person. I want to yeah, zoom I in. Know. And... I know we're kidding, yeah. One of those little fun things. Fun things. So I wanted to show you this. This is a beautiful little reflection nebula. This star's blue light is being scattered by all the dust in here. But look at the detail in here, this amazing little stalk of a nebula sticking out. There's a little bit of a mission nebula here and over there. So there is some hydrogen gas being excited by this star to some extent. And 
Um, it could be caused by this star, or it could be caused by another star. It could be Sigma all the way out here, actually, that could be illuminating that. I uh, don't know, but that's something. I also wanted to point out something else. When you look in this, you're looking at a gigantic cloud of dark nebula. And it's only because the stars inside of it make it clear that that's what you're looking at. This is all dark nebula. This isn't a void in space. This isn't a star with a blue cloud around it. This is a star embedded in dark brown and black dust. And its lights being scattered and thus being made visible by the fact that this gigantic cloud which is pretty clear when you see it here you're seeing the edge of the cloud here and when you come down here you're seeing the edge of the cloud here this is all in here this is all that dark dark dust mixed with hydrogen gas uh, and so when stars are seen from inside uh, their light is reddened in the same way that uh, the particles in our atmosphere and the molecules uh, redden the sunlight by scattering more blue light. And so here, these stars, like this one right here, buried so far inside that they might be as bright as these stars here, but because they're buried so far inside a nebula, they look red, and they look like little red dots. Look at how tiny these red dots can be. That These are you know, embedded so far into this gigantic nebula also known this giant nebula as the orion molecular cloud, cloud complex again uh, molecular clouds meaning molecules of carbon molecules of other materials it's really really something else you know could we zoom in on that reflection nebula on the left yes we can i wonder if dean is wondering what i was wondering <clears throat> this one? Yes. I mean, double star. Uh, These guys. Triple star. Well, that red one. Light that, in the sight. Well, that red one is probably farther into the nebula. That's my guess. And I'm not sure about this one. Maybe it is too. Uh, we'd have to look up this star to see. But it's possible. I funny, I've never noticed that before. No, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Amazing. Wow, see, Alantak has this bright halo from our system, so. But, notice also that if we uh, come down here, look at this little feature here. This I... is was going to say there's that and there's another one above it right there yeah you can see these features here are massive features but if you flew through them with a spacecraft you might not even ever see them because you'd be flying through them for a very long period of time it's like an extensive but extremely thin cloud bank And calling it a cloud makes it, you know, sound like thousands of times thicker and more dense than it really is. Actually, you're seeing a lot in there tonight. Uh, if you back out to where you can see the horse head again, I, the star on the nose and the star on his ear are yeah. showing up well. And in his mane. In his mane. There's a star in the mane. Hold on. Yeah. Slow it down there. Okay. Yeah, you see a star in the main, you see a star on the top, star in the nose, star right there. Uh, a lot of detail in here. You can see filaments within here. And that's, uh, that's this is, again, uh, we have some wind that's affecting us out there, but still, uh, we're able to see it. Now, one thing we can do is pull this down a little bit. And then pull it back slowly. Okay. Me uh, color correct. 
I, you notice that the horse head nebula is actually sort of like a little peninsula of dark nebula sticking off of this beautiful molecular cloud complex which is very very extensive when I showed you that picture of Orion it's all throughout that whole picture it's not just uh, in this one spot you see the top of the horse's head is uh, different color. a little lighter brighter too mm -hmm. yep absolutely beautiful <clears throat> Thank you, Isabella. Oh, Isabella put the boogeyman out there, or the notice to the boogeyman. Thank you. That's beautiful. And now we look at this guy. Okay, that's better. I saw an artifact and I was waiting for it to go away and it did. Look at all the detail in the flame. That is just beautiful. I kind of don't remember seeing so much detail in the flame nebula before. I remember saying much the same thing the last <laughs> time we looked at it. That you see ago. all this detail? Yes. Yeah. a lot more than we used to it seems like yeah it's kind of weird makes me wonder if something else is happening in the flame and we've discovered it <laughs> looks like fire yeah Maya Leone is back hi Maya nice to see you Yeah, it is extra bright tonight, uh, as uh, Bonnie on Ahada 77 says. But if you look at the telescope's pointing, uh, it's pointing that way, which is almost overhead. It's it's pointing kind of up and, you know, toward the south slightly. <coughs> I believe the flame is Daisy and Zoe Amethyst's favorite. It is. So, they were here earlier. I don't know if they're still here. Now that's pretty. Hello, Robert Waters. Nice to see you. <clears throat> okay, we're going to pause here and change the name. <clears throat> Let's call it horse head and flame. All right. Robert Waters, uh, an airy disc. Uh, to see an airy disc here, uh, you would have to go to high power and zoom in on the star. Uh, you would see the airy disk where the star is at uh, 200 power or more probably uh, you would see it as not just a dot of a star but it's like a bright dot with a ring around it and another ring around that maybe another ring around that nice. and don't confuse this with the airy disk that's an artifact of the glass corrector plate at the front end and the wires sticking out from the camera which is sticking off the front end Levitus, Levi, thank you man <clears throat> he says this is worth the price of a movie that's awesome that's really nice of you, thank you brother My Leon says uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson has lately touted the newest web nebula baby 
or Web Nebula Baby. <laughs> uh, can you elaborate? Um, I have to look at the image. I haven't looked at the image. I haven't had a chance. But uh, which? Do you know the image she's talking about, Daryl? No, I don't. Okay. I saw the Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson, I assume she meant. Yes. Uh, he was saying something on YouTube today. I didn't see what it was. Okay. Uh, Isabella, uh, to try to get the idea across about what you're asking, uh, Mark, do you still have that? Orion image. <laughs> Somewhere he has. Well, if, if, if that's too much trouble. No, what she want? Well, she's asking, uh, are, is what we're seeing flipped or anything, or is it uh, as it is in the sky, which it is? It is. It's as it is in the sky, yes. It hasn't been flipped, Isabella. So this is on the talk, the leftmost star, and uh, if I head to the west a little bit, Okay. We move to the west. All right, you'll see Alnalam come into the view here shortly. All right, so let me take us north a little bit. We got a satellite coming through too. All right, now we'll head west. There's Alnalam right there. See, so that's the next star in the belt, and then we can go to Mintaka, which is off the view to the right by an equal amount. See? So we're good. Alright, so if we back out now this. Oh. We could go to the Orion Nebula, but before we do that, I would like to go to the witch's head and do a mosaic of the witch's head. You know, that was the other thing that came to mind when you asked me earlier tonight was I know you showed uh, that nice witch's head uh, yesterday or day before. And <clears throat> yeah. You were catching about the, the lower half or two thirds of her, of, her, of her face, actually. Yeah. There you go, Isabella. Okay. So this, I'm going to take us up now to 350 gain and just check this out. Let's uh take a photograph let me actually just go uh, back to this planetarium shot zoom in on this where it thinks it is um, actually since we're not gonna be able to see it right away what I'll do is I'll go to Rigel and center up Rigel make sure the coordinates are good <coughs> So Rigel is just to the left of it and lower. So here it comes. So we're actually, our coordinates are pretty good. <clears throat> pretty good indeed. So I'm just going to take us and, and uh, do this. We're going to just move it up. Put it right there in the center of our crosshairs. And then just jog us west a tiny bit. 
There we are. All right. Now that we're centered exactly where we want to be, I am going to come over here and pick Rigel again. And I'm going to say center up on Rigel. Now the telescope goes right exactly there. So now uh, when I come over here, we can say go to this spot on the screen and now it will. All right, there we go. It's heading there now. Let's get rid of this. All right. Okay, so right now we will be centered up right where we are on this screen right there perfectly. So now as we zoom in, this is our field of view, as I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move us south a little bit. All right. And just enough to bring the top of the, actually the chin, right, of the witch's head, because it's upside down. into the uh, view a little better. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. All right, a little more. That's good for this one. All right, we'll lock it on, and we'll do a, a nice 50-second exposure of that once we're guiding, <clears throat> guiding stably. All right, good stable guide. Let's go ahead and start the process. Off we go. <clears throat> so we'll clear this stack and let it all come in now. And this will be the Witch's Head Nebula. Oh, thank you, Isabella. There we go. I forgot to bring the clock back, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, 15 seconds for the first image of the witch's head at 350 gain, 35 seconds, 5 seconds, 2 seconds, and here we go. Here we are, exactly where we expected to be. <clears throat> That's good. So, there you see this beautiful, ominous cloud of dust that is scattering the light from Rigel, which is to the left. Remember, we went down to the Rigel, sort of to the left. And uh, that was beautiful. So, we have this image now this part of the witch's head yeah that's uh what was the name of uh get a little closer actress. to your mic there daryl what's that <clears throat> sorry what was the name of the actress in the wizard of oz oh, yes. uh, margaret uh, margaret hamilton yeah margaret hamilton when you see this, folks, it'll look like Margaret Hamilton in costume. That's her chin at the top and her nose toward the bottom. It's upside down. Mm -hmm. Yes, and her mouth is open. That's her upper lip and her lower lip. Right here? Yes. So that's the upper lip. That's the lower lip. Yes. Yep. Your little 
dog too. <laughs> There we go. All right, let's uh, bring our curve in and begin to do some processing as needed. Again, there we go. This is a, a very <clears throat> beautiful shade of blue. Uh, you can actually kind of see it a little bit. We can increase our color response here so you can see a little bit more. That's the wrong way. Gotta let it come back. Well, it's hard to believe. Uh... We need to go look at the comet again if we're going to do it tonight. Mars, uh, uh, the comet and Taurus are getting pretty far over the list. I know, you're right. <clears throat> we will do it. On the other hand, Leo should be visible. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to we're going to go to um, probably. We'll do five frames here. And then we'll drop down, do five more frames. All right. And those can be a mosaic. All right. So we're going to take this star right there and move it up to there. Okay. Sounds like a winner. Yep. Oh. That star up to there. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. think that will be good. I just sent you a message. Okay. All right, I think we can work with this now. Do another 50 second shot here for five frames. And off we go. We're guiding, we're stable, 
and I will check it out. So what we did was we moved this star up to there, so we're getting the bottom half of this. That's really pretty. Indeed. Hmm. I wonder. There's a galaxy in here. There it is right there. Okay. <clears throat> I should have moved over a little more, though. Knowing how this was going. So, before we go too much further, I'm going to clear this. And get out of this and go back to our one second setup for now. Actually, it, now I see how I did that before. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to take this and move it over more because the nebula is actually curved. <clears throat> and we need to catch that. There's our star up there. The nebula's coming down through here. All right. Uh, just go a little east, just to be careful here. Okay, we're guiding, <clears throat> and off we go. We're gonna go and do the 50 seconds again now. This beautiful, extensive blue reflection nebula. son just got home. He works at one of the biggest TV networks in the state. Okay. <clears throat> Isabel's already got the witch's head, the first one up there. Good, thank you. Are you a cameraman? Uh, he is, but he's got a lot of other duties he's doing, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Alright, there we go. Nice. There's the part that is at the bottom of our last image, so now we're catching the rest of it. This is good. <clears throat> and this is, we're not gonna do more than five exposures on this. Well, his head would be perfect if the top of her head had a hat like Margaret Hamilton. <laughs> wow, hey. Maybe somebody could airbrush it in. Well, that's easy to do with a nebula like this. The Margaret Hamilton Nebula. That's funny. <laughs> We're getting slight wind disruption to our image, but you know what? It's It'll be all right. It's very slight. Uh, I meant to ask you when we started tonight... Uh... I saw the forecast they were calling for some degree of wind down there yes. tonight. Yeah. Still coming off the backwash of that storm, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we're looking for 21 mile per hour winds out there tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting, though. Cool. 
<laughs> Isabella, that's not a good idea. <laughs> she says, We should have Hunter on the stream as a guest someday. We can ask him many questions about his dad. I'll bet you can. <laughs> you know what, though? They're, they're so used to it. Gabe, and my son Gabe, you know, uh, and Hunter, they're, <clears throat> they're used to everything I do. They almost don't know what I do anymore because it's just sort of like, ah, you know, dad does dad. <clears throat> They've never watched me on TV. They never see the stuff I've done, and it's okay. Because it's like, yeah, no, he's into that. Because to them, that's just my job. That's just what I do. Um, and so they don't um, think of it as anything crazy or like, ooh, my dad's so-and-so or whatever, you know. And I like that. I like that a lot. I think that's really cool. That means they I don't be a, a real person. They don't roll their eyes and go... There's Dad the Nerd again. I didn't say that. <laughs> that they, they, they will do. You know. Oh, this blue is showing up nice now. Look at that. We're starting to see some red, because there is some red uh, emission nebula that's tied in down here. And I think we're picking it up. As it says there, please do the thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Also, could you please... If you haven't subscribed, join our family. We actually love what we do. Uh, and you can see, uh, this is all live. We're doing this live. And uh, I dare say we're the only ones, I think, doing this type thing. I mean, we're, only, we're the only ones that are broadcasting the universe live and showing you objects and then keep making them available to you within like 30 seconds. No one else is doing that. I can't understand why. Well, yeah, I do. There what you... are other <clears throat> astronomy live streams out there, but none of them do what you do, the way you do it. Yeah, and and I can understand why, because, you know, they're setting up a telescope, they're setting up their stream, and they're doing it. Um, we're in a building. I specifically designed this system to be remote. Um, and... Not a lot of people apparently want to take the time to figure out how to do that. I've offered to help people with it. I don't have a problem if they want to do it. I think it's great. But not a whole lot of people are actually taking the time to do it. Hey there, OG Skywatch and MLR. How you doing? Look at this, Daryl. There's a faint galaxy right here that we didn't see before and another one right here. Looks like two galaxies right there. I'm talking about these two guys right here. Yeah. Inside that square. So this guy is interesting. This 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 galaxy is really neat because it's a what looks like a spiral galaxy or a barred spiral. Uh, and I noticed over here is that one too. Kind of looks like it. Yeah. So we have that one. We have this guy right here, it looks like. Uh, there's another faint one right there, of some type. Not sure. But, you know, we're looking into the Orion Spur. We're looking dead center into a uh, region of the galaxy that's pretty dense with dark clouds. And we still see some of these things in there. That's pretty cool. Um, I read something recently uh, about uh, Eridanus the river. Yeah. The constellation. You're, I think mm -hmm. you're right at the end of Eridanus right now. I think so. Uh, and some of the stars in this area near the Witch's Head, they call the Footstool. Oh, uh, interesting. Which is where Orion is resting his foot. Uh, right okay. okay and uh, there was other things they said about the constellation Eridanus uh, um, I don't recall I don't know if I should even mention this I'd have to go back and verify it but I want to say they said that there was another large uh, huge void 
in Eridanus, uh, sort of like the Boötes void. Yeah. That uh, it's a it's a true void out in space, like a big batch of nothingness out there, or, or you know, uh, I, I think you're talking like a, a galactic uh, cluster scale or something. That yeah. Is, there's there's a big spot of nothingness out there, it's a true void. If you see the constellation Eridanus, folks, uh, if you can find Rigel there at his bottom right, uh, it'd be his left foot as he faces us. Uh, the star is wandering off to the west and south from Orion, or Eridanus, the constellation. It means the river. It's a large, kind of winding, wandering constellation there to the lower right of Orion. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, oh, we're getting remnants of the screen here. Interesting. All right. And let me just do this. All right. And then do this. All right, so now it's not there. It still is. <laughs> okay, interesting. Well, all right. It's it's not really there. Okay, so what I'm going to do was head back to look at the comet. So we're going to try that now. And you see the telescope is winding back, heading toward the northeast a little bit. There's the comet telescope knows where it's pointing that's what I like I like the the fact that we can still have the telescope know where it's pointing 2,500 miles away uh, and even if it gets screwed up we can actually fix that Daryl remembers a time when we couldn't oh yeah <laughs> we, we'd hunt for things we recognized and okay let's put in the coordinates now we found it you know, and I believe it was in the summertime, and we would look for Antares or Measure Four, the uh, globular cluster, and we would just do a grid search until we found it. But remember that? Oh yeah. Well, there was a time, yeah, that uh, I mean, we'd try to identify anything where the That's right. telescope would land. Uh, in the sky that time of year about when uh, Antares and Scorpius right. was up. And, uh, that's right. We would uh, uh, we would uh, catch the edge <laughs> of the Milky Way and follow it up. Yep. We actually found some cool things that way. Yeah. That's how I got started looking at Dark Nebula. Yeah. Okay, so all right, we're st we are doing our guiding now. This is our telescope computer, and it says that we're guiding fine. Hey, Uberku. All right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is come over here, and we'll do a 40-second uh, shot. And it's underway now. So we'll see what the comet looks like at the moment. Bring up our stack. Make our image sandwich. This is the bottom of our last shot. That's really pretty. I can't wait to process that. Even though there's some wind that looks a little fuzzy, it's okay. Right, we're coming up on 10 seconds our new shot looks like there's some extra detail there too that we'll be digging out all right one second zero and boom there's our comet let's look at the details all righty that's pretty cool let's uh color correct it and that'll make some things 
stand out for us. I think I misspoke earlier. Uh, the comet has already flown all the way through the high 80s and is exiting now. It was actually closest to Aldebaran last night. Ah, oh, when it was cloudy, I couldn't stream. Yeah. And it's uh, flying south out of... Uh, <clears throat> Sort of out of uh, the hiatus now. Okay, so let's drop this brightness down here because uh, cause I don't want uh, MLR to think it, it's a Christmas bulb. <laughs> That's funny. We can fix that though by just moving this this way a little bit. I mean, it's a 50, uh, sorry, a 40 second exposure, so we got a lot going on here, as well as a satellite making its way through. You can see the gas tail there. Right there, look at that. It's pretty obvious. I think what we could do, I'm going to uh, go back to putting our comet this uh, descriptor in. I'm going to change this exposure to 25 seconds and start over because I think <clears throat> I think that 25 seconds will show the coma and the central part better, and I think we'll still be able to see some of that plasma tail think and we'll know in three two one zero and image let's go see oh yeah yeah maybe not the comet is a little further into the to the west so when it was directly overhead was the best view we would have had of it. Well, that's really nice. We have to highly overexpose this central core to get this gas tail. something interesting uh, oh, the okay. necklace nebula yeah uh, I don't think I'd ever seen that or heard of it before wow. it's in Sagitta uh, Sagitta the arrow there yeah down around Volpecula and uh, you know the uh, uh, the dumbbell and all that and uh, It'll be visible in, in the summer sky. She asked specifically if it could be seen in Canada. And yes, it can. Okay. But we'll have to wait a few months. It's actually, the picture of it looks really cool. Awesome. There's a, this, the nebula in Sagitta? Yes. Sagitta the arrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wow. Okay, well, we'll save this. Uh, Isabella Mosaic the Witch's Head. I will send it to you shortly. Awesome. Yes, Isabella, you're downright dangerous now. <laughs> she loves that mosaicing program. Oh, I know. The thing is, it's not made anymore. Uh, I had to get it from a 
archive. So that goes away. We got to use a different way. I mean, if it totally goes away, we have to use something different. You can still find it online. Mm. That's beauteous. Beauteous. And of course, as always, that's our Comet 2022 E3 comes. ZTF. Ta-da! Alright. You should have it. I see it. <clears throat> now, mind you guys, this one is unprocessed, uh, really, so... When we go to look at it, you'll see that it may have uh, some artifacts from the uh, composing of the two. So don't worry about it. We'll be able to get uh, get that yeah. fixed. Should be able to make out all of her head or face now. We'll find out. Okay, so here we go. Let's come out of this. Okay, you can see where we put it together. That's interesting. But that's the whole... Th oh, wait, you can't see it yet. Let me show it to you guys. Ready? Eh, here we go. <laughs> well, there you go. And let's remove uh, this guy here for a minute. Hmm. There we go. There's the whole chin, mouth, nose, and the head. And this is our composition uh, location. So we'll we'll work on that and get that fixed. Looks really pretty though. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Thank you, Isabella. That's wonderful. Really pretty. <clears throat> okay so there's the comet we saved this earlier I saved this image earlier um, and now uh, we can go and return to our one second uh, night vision view which is coming right up right there okay Yeah, look how far over our telescope's hanging. All right, that's how far over it is. If you look at how far we are uh, from the horizon, that's where the horizon is. And so we were trying to image something that was about 40, 40 degrees, 40, no, about 50 degrees above the horizon, which is fine. We can still get away with that. Um, but it's actually pretty... Uh, pretty uh, bright uh, well let's go over here and head over here and now where we are is we're starting to enter galaxy season I wonder if we can see this here that's regulus <clears throat> let's see how high up that is Oh, okay. I think we can do it. One of the things we wanted to do oh. was to... Oh, we all... Huh? Oh, that? no, carry on. I was going to say, I was thinking we could actually start to image some of these galaxies down here. Yeah, what I'd wanted really tonight was if you could... Uh... 95, 96, the hamburgers, 65 and 66. Uh, Leo there, might be, there might be a, too much of a spread there for the mosaic. I'm not sure. Um, we could try going right here. Sure. 
All right, and then from there. Yeah. So yeah, here we're under the lion's belly, right? 60, yes. Sixty-five <clears throat> and sixty-six are under his hindquarters, over on the left. Okay, so this isn't the Leo triplet, right? Do we have a Leo triplets further over there? Uh, you've got three M objects there, though. I do. Yeah. 105, yeah. 95, and 96. Yeah. But yeah. then... Uh, we're, we're close to... You know, we're just at our limit here, so... I think that... Um, the spacecraft has slowed down, and we've got them. All right. Let me look here. <clears throat> okay, so basically, this is M96, this is M95. We're going to move to the west a little bit. And what is the one above an M105? Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to go north. <clears throat> and if I remember right, the triplet is 65, 66, and the hamburger galaxy, right? Yeah. And those are uh, not in this area. Right. No, they're off to the left. Yeah. And I don't, think, I don't think we can see those yet. Mission 95, 96, and Mission 105. Uh, these galaxies have some interesting characters, so we're going to check them out. Okay, we've just calibrated. We're guiding now. I see at least five galaxies in the image already. Yeah, you got the one, uh, two, three, four. And then we have uh, another one right there. Green is really pronounced. <clears throat> Alright, ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Give us our galaxies. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And we said, like, five galaxies at least. Now let's look at the the true facts about what's really here. Let's see if we got more than five. We have this one, as before, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> and uh Yeah, this this the second stack uh makes everything a lot clearer. Excuse me just a moment. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so let's look at these galaxies. I'm going to zoom in here just to show you. Okay, so... Okay, we're going to 
pull this down. Look at that. It looks like a steering wheel. <clears throat> and you see these arms go out like this. Arms go out like this. Uh, and this galaxy, I believe, uh, Measure 95, is a, a barred spiral galaxy. Or Measure 96, I mean. Yeah, it's a what's called an SAB, right? That is S A, and then capital B. So a spiral structure with a bar across the center. As we expose more, you'll see it. <clears throat> then M ninety five, on the other hand, is another uh, galaxy known as an SB. It's a, a barred spiral as well. It looks even more like a true bar. You can see it. <clears throat> you see that? Look at the bar. And that really looks like a steering wheel. The spiral arms come off of it and go this way, and then these spiral arms go off. They come off the end of the bars, and it almost looks like a complete circle. There's more detail out there. Isn't that cool? <laughs> And if we actually just allow ourselves to just pull down a little bit of the detail, then we can actually uh, catch it without uh, a lot of the noise. There we go. Yep. So these are barred spirals. You can see the bars going across the middle here. And like I said, over there. Very interesting. <clears throat> Our galaxy is now thought to be one such type of spiral. A barred spiral, just like that. And then these guys up here. Now these are different. Let's explain. <clears throat> okay. So now, up top here, right, we have, right, measure 105, which is this galaxy here, right, and that's actually an elliptical galaxy, and it's basically a round galaxy that's just a ball of stars, basically. There's very little gas and dust inside this galaxy. And that's what it is with these particular galaxies. They don't seem to have a whole lot of gas and dust left in them, okay? And then this galaxy over here, right, NGC is at 3384, okay, this is a type of spiral that is so tight that you can't even see its spiral arms. You can see the disc around there, but its, it's spiral arms are almost so tight that you can't see them. And then we have this guy down here, an altogether different type of galaxy here. This one is uh, a very strange galaxy. And uh, it's sort of like an irregular galaxy. And so you've got all these different types here. You have two barred spirals, and then you have these, these uh, this weird trio up here. But really neat. Actually, you can zoom in on that a little. And see that in more detail. <clears throat> Zoom in and then let it. Okay. Look at that. Really interesting in there. Well. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right, 
Let's put that out there. So M95, 96, and 105. This is the Leo Galaxies. Those three are not those. Uh, if we back out, you'll see them. Oh, there's another one right there. Another one right there. So that's up to uh, seven. And there'll be more than that. There we go. <clears throat> so that one looks really nice. You can see the steering wheel. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. Nice. And we'll go to 15 <clears throat> exposures on this, which means 7 minutes and uh, 30 seconds. There we go. So I'll we'll pause this. I've got it uh, up here. We're going to say M95, M96, M105. Those are galaxies. And we'll say save. And we get the fits file out there. And then we'll save exactly as seen. <clears throat> That's as far east as we can go right now, Daryl. Oh, good. Hey, we did manage to get under Leo, though. That's right. We sure did. Just uh, not all the way under Leo, though. Yeah, I know. We can't get all the way to the back side. No. That's okay. Can you put the figure of the lion in there for a second? Sure. <clears throat> See where we were just looking, folks. That's right under the lion's belly. There's the sick little Leo up toward the top right. That's the lion's head. And then uh, the other ones we were wondering about are down under the lion's tail. His hindquarters there, 65 and 66. Right there. That's called the Leo triplet. Yep, you know, we can't get quite that far yet. Can't get quite that far yet, because if we look at our altitude above the horizon here, uh, we're only <clears throat> about 40 degrees. Uh, and for the east side of the observatory, which is this side you see here, uh, we need about 45 degrees minimum. Yeah. And this is just barely making it when we're doing that. So we're at 46 degrees there. You want to see a promise of springtime, though. Uh, the bright star Spica in Virgo is up by 10 o'clock now. Yeah. That's cool. Farther over to the lower left of Leo right now. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so... There's Leo, the lion there. Leo Minor, and I think we should we should just go check out the beehive because this is actually uh, we see the little beehive measure forty one. Yeah. Why don't we see the namesake? <laughs> so this is the beehive cluster, the true beehive, the one and only named Presepi. All right, and we're gonna go there. I already saved this. So, uh, I think I did. Let me see. Pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> There's okay. The manger. That's the manger, yeah. And there's our manger. <clears throat> so, let's uh, move it up. This was another deep sky object that was known to the ancients. Mm. Could see a naked eye in a horse. Yeah, a good dark sight you could have. Well, let's be clear. Dark sights were all they had. Alright. 
I'm going to call it a night pretty soon, Mark. Okay. Well, let's see, we're going to go to the west a little bit here. <clears throat> Okay. Alright, so this is this guy. The beehive or measure 44. Okay, we're guiding now and this this one's worth a uh, 20 second exposure. And I'm going to drop the sensitivity to 300 from 350. Okay. The heck is a manger anyway. Uh, it's a, it's a long open box or trough for horses or cattle to eat from. Yes. Okay, let's see our manger. All right. <clears throat> Correction is done. Let's get rid of the high intensity processing and just bring us down to this. Wow, this is really pretty. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? Oops. What? I'm sorry, I was. Uh, oh, you're muted? Muted? No. Oh, I'm jumping around a lot. Uh, okay. I went to your YouTube stream page by mistake. Okay. <laughs> you were still showing the comments, and then I see that I had hit the stop button, so it wasn't playing. Oh, okay. All right. So. Of course, we hear manger in the, the that. Christmas him. Yes, away in the manger, no crib for a bed or something like that. I don't know. Uh -huh. All right. It's a horse trot. Yeah. Feed trot. This is a very colorful cluster with a bunch of fairly red members in it. So I wonder. Blue ones too. Yeah, I wonder <clears throat> how evolved this cluster is. Because these could be hot blue stars that have evolved off the main sequence and gone into their first red giant stage. That's what we could be seeing here. Wow. Very nice. We'll do a few more and then we'll actually save this too. Persepi. Or the beehive, we'll call it measure 44. All right, as I have it labeled there. OC for open cluster. Hey Dan Longano, how are you? It is a 10 inch telescope, yes, uh, but we're it's normally an F8 system and we're running at F2. So we have a two degree by one and a half degree field in size and it's uh, uh, quite a lot faster because it's running at F2. So we can capture very faint nebulae in seconds versus minutes. Uh, and we produce them, and uh, if you know, maybe don't know Dan, we, we store them up on a server, which you can get to by going to skytourlive.org and scrolling down to see Take Me to Cool Pictures. And then uh, there's instructions there, and you can go and dig into the directories and take down the pictures just like you see them here. And from the time that we shoot them here, uh, when I hit save, Okay, like if I just say right now, save, okay, that now saves an astronomical file format of FITS, 
And uh, now if I say save exactly as seen, okay, right now it's being shipped out of the observatory up to the cloud and will go out onto our server and will be available worldwide in about 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds. So this is pretty cool. <clears throat> I just wanted to have to make sure we had the infrastructure to, to spread this around, you know. But go to skytourlive.org. On the upper left in there, when you go in, it'll take you to Skytour live stream here. You see all the stuff we do. And on the upper right, uh, there's a Patreon page up there that you can join and subscribe to get high-end um, uh, high um, uh, imagery that we process from all of our stuff. And if you go into more, you'll see Sky Tour Radio, right? And Sky Tour Radio is hosted by me and Daryl, who's here, uh, and um, and Tara Daulis, who's not here tonight, but she's often with us. And um, we talk about astronomy and and ask questions about uh, the universe and so forth. I'm an astronomer, so that helps. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, that's that's what you do if you want to check us out but do uh, do subscribe to us you know <clears throat> okay and hello Catherine the phone and how are you Catherine's joining us if you haven't joined us before please subscribe and, and hang out and she sees she says I need to get some wisdom on this where do I where do I but uh, you suggest I oh, where do you suggest I start Oh, you know what, Catherine? There are some excellent online resources to learn about astronomy. And if you want to, you can watch our previous streams at SkyTour Livestream. Okay. Again, you can find that through SkyTourLive.org. And uh, you can also find us on YouTube because we are on YouTube as SkyTour Livestream. And uh, check us out. And I do suggest astronomy classes. Um, I'm not teaching any at the moment, but I can tell you that uh, there's many wonderful folks out there that teach online classes. And interestingly enough, if you look up Introductory Astronomy course in Google, you'll find quite a lot of options for you. And then, of course, if you are if you join us and, and become a, uh, a member of SkyTour Livestream, um, you know, it's free. Uh, unless you do the Patreon. Um, then you can always ask me questions. You know? And I'm always available here at skytourlive.org. You can you can get to me there and send us an email in the Contact Us section. Uh, and anyone who is out there in the chat now who's left me a message, they'll tell you that I respond right away. Uh, so that's something to uh, to check out. So... All right, so this is 21 shots of this. I think we're pretty well done with that. So the beehive, we'll save it again. Save it exactly as seen. And there we are. I think that that puts us at the end of tonight's stream. Um, <clears throat> we did a number of objects tonight. And they're all available up on the um, server at the moment, probably take that out of there uh, and I did want to thank you guys for coming and joining us tonight and if there's anything that you like to ask questions of or anything again skytourlive.org check us out ask questions I'll be happy to answer and um, you know uh, it's one of those times where it's hard to shut down when you have such a beautiful sky overhead right I will show you one more thing uh, before we do adjourn for the evening, let me uh, just bring up our uh, let me just bring up our imagery here. Not imagery. I want to bring up our uh, this guy coming up. Oh, come on! It's got to be here. All right. So we'll do this. There it is. Okay. All right, so bring this back up. All right. All right, now uh, I'll show you. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you here. Let me just uh, 
open this up a little. All right. It's this guy right here. <clears throat> this is our all sky camera. In addition to the telescope and the building and the cameras and all the amazing stuff that we show, we also have an all sky camera so you can see the entire sky at a glance. Uh, and this is actually pretty cool. So we'll show you that. It does a, a 15 second shot. Uh, right now because I have it set to that I could set it to anything I want and uh, so in five seconds here we'll see it and you'll see the whole sky <clears throat> there we go so there now uh, north is at the top south is down here east is over here and west is over there that glow you see is the lights of Phoenix 70 miles away okay um, you can't see that with your eye at all all right. If you notice, it is quite dark out here. Here's the winter Milky Way. <laughs> you can clearly see it. All right. And if you notice also, all right, um, I'll show you. Okay. Right here is the constellation of Orion. Can't miss it. There's Betelgeuse. Okay. We have Bellatrix. We have Safe. And Rigel. And we have the three belt stars, on the Tak, on the Lam, and Mintaka, and then that little fuzzy in the middle there. That's the Orion Nebula. So that's uh, that's that. And now, also, uh, if uh, the comet just came out of here, this is where the comet was. This, these are the Hyades and Aldebaran. Mars is right there. Um, and then we have uh, the... Uh, most amazing, uh, this is Capella and the kids and the constellation Auriga right here. Right? So this is our winter winter constellations that are heading down, okay? And uh, Taurus is over here setting, okay? Uh, and so we're actually, uh, you know, we're actually on our way out of winter. And Leo the Lion is coming up over here. Right, this is Leo, there's Regulus, and this is our backward sickle, right? Right there. And our the back end is, is not quite visible, but that's okay. Uh, and then right here you have one, two, three, and the stars, the big dipper. These two stars point to this star, which is the North Star. And here's the little dipper right here. With Kochab down there at the end. So here is our night sky that we've been viewing for a while tonight. So I hope you've had enjoyed this time with us. And I look forward to sharing this with you again. And maybe tomorrow, if we do this again, we'll go and look at something much different. In any case, guys, I hope you had a great time. I think that, I think you did right, Daryl? You had some fun, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Without a doubt, you know. And uh, Good night, everybody. if you guys have an idea what you'd like to see, uh, and you know the sky, let us know. Or just put some suggestions. You know, contact us, give us some suggestions, and we'll be happy to uh, to do it. Check it out. Anyway, have a good night, everybody. And you know what that music means. We start with it, we end with it. So you guys have a good night, and we will talk to you soon enough. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night.